What's up, guys? It's yo boy Omnisensei back with Reborn as Tetsuya Shiba in DXD. Part 2. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel, and for more exclusive content. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. From that day onwards, both Surfall and Grafia often came to his restaurant. At first they were surprised that the restaurant belonged to him, but later shrugged it off as his food was too good. They had also met Miyuki and Karumi and Miyuki during one of their visits, and Miyuki was very wary of them at first, and thought that they had come to take Tetsuya away from them, but after Tetsuya explained the situation she started to loosen up around them. Both Surfall and Miyuki got along very well as both of them liked to talk about magical girls, and Surfall treated her just like Sona. Surfall even ranted her problem that how cold her sister was to her, and how she didn't like magical girls. Both of them had to calm her down by letting her hugging them till she felt asleep. At one time Grafia and Surfal brought Milikas along with them. Tetsuya who saw him was neither the less happy meeting him, and treated him like his little brother. Milikas too had a lot of fun with him, and started treating Tetsuya as his older brother. Tetsuya also got some information from the strongest queen. One day Surfal forced Grafia to drink along with her, and Grafia though being reluctant, still drank some alcohol, and immediately became lightheaded. She started spouting random things and because of that Tetsuya had to take her to the guest room along with Surfal who was already passed out. The information that Tetsuya got was that in this world Grafia was not Serzich's wife, and was only his queen, and that Serzich's married some other member of her clan who died after giving birth to Milikas. Once both of them woke up Tetsuya started scolding both of them was the actions that they caused in his restaurant, and how much it disturbed the customers. During the whole time Tetsuya was scolding them they were in Siza position with their heads down, Surfal also got a head chop when she tried to refute Tetsuya. She even tried to ask Miyuki to take her side and fight against him, to which Miyuki easily ignored and took Tetsuya's side. Surfal got shocked at how easily Miyuki left her alone and ran out of the room, while saying things like both of them were being mean. Grafia once again apologized for the problems that she caused and left. The rest of the things were going on peacefully. Miyuki was steadily getting stronger and stronger, and Tetsuya was very satisfied with her progress. Tetsuya's restaurant has also gotten very famous, and he was planning on opening a branch in Kyoto with Yusaka's help. Right now Tetsuya was going home after buying some groceries for his home and the ingredients for his restaurant. While he was crossing a bridge his eyes shifted a bit and he stopped for a bit to watch the sunset. He leaned against the railings of the bridge and watched the sunset. While he was watching he noticed something from the corner of his eyes. He looked towards the river and saw something floating in the river. He looked more closely and saw an injured white cat lying unconscious on a plank of wood. Tetsuya first looked around to check if someone was there or not. Feeling that no one was around Tetsuya jumped in the river, but rather than swimming he walked on the water using chakra. He went towards the cat and picked it up, and as soon as he picked the cat he felt a faint presence of magic in the cat. The cat might be someone's familiar or in Ekameta, though the cat had hidden its presence quite well, but for someone as strong as Tetsuya could easily tell that it was not a normal cat. Tetsuya went back and placed the cat inside his hoodie, and started to use pyrokinesis on it, so that the cat do not catch cold. After reaching his home he directly went towards his room not disturbing Miyuki and Karumi who were watching TV. He went towards a cupboard and took out a first aid box from it, and started treating the cat, though he still used some magic to heal her, and enhance her recovery as well, he didn't use it too much, as it would have caused the cat to be suspicious of him. After completing the treatment he placed her on a cushion and covered her with a small blanket and started stroking her ears. After touching her ears Tetsuya was unable to hold himself back and just like he did in Kyoto, he gave in to his pleasure and started stroking her ears, though not very fiercely as he may frighten the cat. After some time, while he was playing with her, the cat woke up and gave a yawn. Seeing that she had woken up Tetsuya wanted to stop himself but was not able to. 
The cat felt comforted and started purring. But soon she realized that she was in an unknown location and immediately jumped back. As soon as she landed on the ground, a jolt of pain emerged in her body and gave a painful meow. Seeing her jump back, Tatsaya wanted to stop her, but he was too late, and when he heard her painful meow, Tatsaya sighed. He picked the cat up and started to stroke her gently, while infusing some magic to ease her pain. After a while he said, you should be careful your wounds have still not healed yet. I will not harm you so you should not be afraid of me. The cat was still wary of the human but didn't do anything as his caressing was making her feel better. Once Tatsaya thought that she was fine he brought her near his face. They both looked at each other for a while. Tatsaya noticed that the cat had bright pink eyes, he stared for a bit and then started rubbing his cheeks with hers and was enjoying the blissful softness of her fur. The cat was dumbfounded by Tatsaya. To her he looked expressionless and cold, but here he was affectionately rubbing his face with hers. Though the cat was annoyed by this, she let it be as he was the one who saved her. Tatsaya stopped doing that and looked again at her and asked, do you want to eat something? Hearing his question the cat nodded her head unconsciously, but then she suddenly realized what she had done she started meowing. Tatsaya who saw her nod her head thought, though she is trying to lay low, she doesn't know how to act like a cat very well, and nodded her head which is not like a cat. She is definitely a yaokai Tatsaya didn't said anything, put her back in his hoodie such that her head was popping out, and then went to the kitchen and started making food. Once the food was prepared the aroma coming out of it made the cat's mouth flooding with saliva. Tatsaya chuckled on seeing this and served the food in two dishes and went to eat along with her. A week had passed since Tatsaya had brought the Nekometa. Her injuries were healed by the third day, but she still lived along with him and the others. Miyuki and Karumi had also met her, but were unable to tell that she was a yaokai, as she had hit her energy very well. The cat enjoyed living there as the food was very good, and she was treated just like a family, though she struggled a bit when Tatsaya secretly caresses all over her body and would run his cheeks with her. She felt that her body was ravaged by him, but forgave him as she liked that as well, and also the food which he made was also very good. Tatsaya also noticed that the cat would go out alone every night after checking that everyone was asleep. To keep a record of her Tatsaya had marked her with his magic, so that he could tell where she was, and it would also inform him if she was in danger. Through this magic Tatsaya knew that she would move away from them so that they would be safe. Tatsaya had noticed that during the night whenever Tatsaya felt presence of some devils she would go out and the devils were found dead there. It was like the devils were following her. Tatsaya wanted to know the reason because of which the devils were following her, but he remained silent and thought that she would tell him when the time comes. He didn't thought that she was evil because if she was evil Kurumi would have felt her negative emotions. Tatsaya would also take the cat with her whenever he would go out inside his hoodie with her head popping out. The cat at first was confused by all this at first, but started enjoying this type of outing, and also started to jump in his hoodie on her own. Right now Tatsaya is lying on his bed trying to sleep, but suddenly the magic that he had placed on the cat started giving and so signal. Tatsaya immediately checked her location and found her surrounded by a lot of devils. Tatsaya immediately changed to his combat gear with his magic and teleported to her location. As soon as he teleported there he turned invisible and hid his presence. He then looked towards the direction of the devils and saw a lot of them. There were three low class, three middle class, two high class, and even one ultimate class devils there he also saw a girl wearing a navy blue colored kimono and fighting the devils with a katana. All the devils except the high class and ultimate class were fighting her while the others were standing behind them and watching their subordinates fight. The girl was easily able to deal with the devils and was also able to inflict damage on them. She slashed her sword forward with the intent to kill, but was suddenly hit by a fireball. Give up already and this will be less trouble for the both of us. You cannot defeat us all anyway. Said one of the high class devils. Yeah why are you struggling so much you were never wanted by anyone, so when some people are showing interest in you why are you resisting, you might at least do something good for us you unwanted shit. The girl got up with the help of her katana, and then started radiating her aura, and two white cat ears and a tail came out. She pointed her katana at the one who fired the magic at her and vanished from her place. Suddenly a clang sound was heard. The girl's katana was now covered in blood and the devil's head fell down. The low class and the middle class devils were terrified and were unable to move. 
Seeing this the girl again vanished from her place at the next moment all the devil's heads, except the remaining high class and ultimate class fell down. The high class devil frowned and started firing his magic randomly in her direction. The girl was dodging or slicing through the magic, but suddenly she felt something coming at her from the side, and then she was suddenly thrown towards the wall. When the smoke cleared the ultimate class devil appeared. The devil looked towards the girl and said, if you do not come willingly we can bring you with us after killing you, and then turning you into a devil. It is for your own good that you follow our orders. The girl though she was in pain, stood up and said in a weak voice, I will not go with you. Both the devils snorted, and the high class devil raised his voice in frustration and said, who do you think you are you bitch, just because we are giving you little priority you think you can do anything. Boss I say we just kill her and then take her back as a devil, the girl who heard this started to release an ominous dark aura, and her black hair started turning white. Seeing her power increasing the even the ultimate class devil panicked a little. The girl whose hair had fully turned white looked at the devils with a glare and said, I cannot die, and I will not go with you finally after all this time I received some affection and caring, and you want me to throw it all away. She said that and launched towards the devils. She started slashing her katana at the both of them inflicting some deep wounds to them, the ultimate class devil was able to hold himself, but it was another matter for the high class devil. He was not even able to see her movement much less dodge her attacks. He gritted his teeth and again started firing his magic in random direction. Just as he gave a sigh of relief and thought that he got her, he heard, behind you, and then his chest was pierced by the girl. She took out her katana from his body, and then looked towards the ultimate class devil, but was not able to see him. Thinking that he might have ran away she started growling in anger, but suddenly she was hit in the stomach by something and flew back. The devil appeared in the place she was standing before and then started laughing maniacally. The girl when got her balance looked towards him, but the devil disappeared once again, but this time she was vigilant. She started looking around, but suddenly she felt a something aimed at her temple, and immediately ducked to dodged. The devil appeared in front of her, and she slashed her katana in his direction. The devil jumped back and again disappeared. The girl was starting to get irritated and started cursing him. The devil took advantage of her enraged state and started attacking her. The girl unable to stop the attack was being hit by him repeatedly. The devil kicked her in the stomach and she crashed back on a wall. The girl was about to pick her katana, but then the devil appeared in front of her and broke her katana with his feet. The girl was about to attack him with her claws, but she fell down on her knees and coughed blood. Seeing her condition the devil said, looks like that power boost takes a huge toll on your body well none of my problem now. I will just kill you and then take you with me. The devil charged a magic blast and was about to fire at her, but suddenly both of them heard a voice, oi stop. With you both the girl and the devil were shocked seeing the source of the voice, the girl was more shocked though as she recognized him. The devil started releasing his aura and asked in a cold tone, who are you human and what are you doing here? Tetsaya who was not affected by his aura, said in his usual emotionless voice, my identity is none of your concern, and I am here to take the cat as she belongs to me. The devil got more agitated and said, how dare you speak like that to me you useless human. Take this. He fired the magic sphere at Tetsaya. Seeing the sphere moving towards Tetsaya the girl wanted to save him or warn him, but was unable to and was crying. The ball when hit Tetsaya caused an explosion and the devil started to laugh, but then a frown appeared on his face as he noticed the explosion started to become smaller and smaller, and then he noticed Tetsaya sucking in the attack like a vacuum with his devouring magic. Tetsaya finished devouring his magic and said, is this all, or you have anything else in store for me, the devil had a pissed off look on his face, and launched two towards Tetsaya. Tetsaya being Tetsaya didn't give a shit to him, took out Murasam, Akame's katana, and slashed his neck. The devil fell back and clutched his neck and looked towards Tetsaya in fear and asked, what did you do to me? Tetsaya still remained expressionless and said, nothing just gave you a curse. And then smiled at him. The man uttered one last bastard and then fell down dead. After the devil died Tetsaya cleaned the area with his magic and then walked towards the cat. He bent down to her level and asked, you okay? And then started using his healing spell. After her injuries were healed Tetsaya looked at her and said, now let's start from the beginning my name is Tetsaya Shiba, nice to meet you. Tetsaya said with a small dot smile. 
The girl who was about the same age as him blushed a little but still introduced herself. Nice to meet you as well I am Himari Nahara. After introducing herself Himari thought for a while and snapped and then said, Wait a minute, it is not a time for introductions. Tell me who know what are you? And how did you know that I was the cat? Titsaya heard her but didn't care about that he was currently focusing on her ears. Titsaya got his concentration back and said, Well I am a human, though I can use magic as you have seen, and I knew that you were the cat as I had infused some of my magic in you while I was healing you, so that I could track you or know whether you were in danger, because every night you went out after you thought that everyone was asleep. Amari didn't said anything as she was digesting the information that she just got. After a while she looked back at him and asked, Did you knew that I was a yaokai when you saved me? Titsaya just nodded his head in reply. Himari just scowled and asked, Then why did you save me, do you want me for my power too? Titsaya still in his expressionless mode said, Well I didn't knew that you were a yaokai till I picked you up from the river, and to why I saved you because you were gravely injured, and also you were cute, and your fur was very soft oh it felt so good. And before you ask why I let you stay even after you were healed. The answer to that question is simple I didn't felt any ill intent from you towards me or my family, and it was also fun being with you, you should see your face which you make while eating. Himari who heard his reasoning, didn't knew what to think about him, she was confused whether Titsaya was foolish or kind, but shrugged it off. She got up from his spot and said, thank you for taking care of me during the entire week. Now I will be going. Before she was about to move Titsaya grabbed her hand and asked, do you have any place to go? Hearing no answer from her Titsaya only sighed and said, Why not live with us, join our family, it will be very fun. When she heard Titsaya's question she was happy and was about to accept it, but shook her head in denial. Titsaya didn't react it and asked, May I know why? Himari was a bit reluctant to tell him, but decided that it would be okay as he was trying to help her. She took a deep breath and said, I don't want to cause you any trouble, and I don't want your loved ones to die because of my curse. Hearing the word curse Titsaya became curious and asked, what curse? Himari then started to tell him about her curse. In the Nekometa tribe there were mostly females, and hence they required to find a male from other species for childbirth. Himari was a Nekashu with her being a half Nekometa and a half human, but she was declared a cursed child, as her ears were of different color than her hair, and it was evident that she was cursed as she had the power of darkness which made her lose control and even attack the allies. She and her mother were abandoned by the tribe at a very young age. Since then no one had cared for her, and a few years later her mother died as well. Though it seemed that some devils heard about her cursed power wanted to have it for themselves and started to attack her because of it. She could easily slip past through them, but a devil planted a tracker inside her body, and she was unable to remove it, and since then she had been on run from those devils till she met Titsaya. Titsaya who heard her gave her a light head chop and said, There is no way you are cursed your ears look beautiful to me. As he said that Himari blushed a bit. Titsaya then gave her another head chop, but this time he applied a bit force to it. Himari clutched her head and said, Why the hell are you hitting me? Titsaya didn't answer her and said, And there is no such thing as cursed power in this world. There are only power which can be controlled or power which cannot be controlled. And yours is the second kind, you just need to work hard and make sure to master that power of yours. I will help you so what do you say? Himari looked at him for a while and said, I cannot I don't want you people to get troubled because of me remember those devils can still track me, what would you do if they harm the others dear to you? Titsaya who heard her said, they are more than enough to take care of themselves, and if you still not feel satisfied, then here take it. Titsaya then gave Himari something. Himari took the thing in her hand it was a small sphere-like thing. Himari was confused and looked at Titsaya for explanation. Titsaya looked at her confused expression and said, It is the tracker they planted in you, I took it out of your body with magic. Himari was shocked on hearing him. Titsaya stood up and moved his hand towards Himari and asked, I will ask you again are you willing to join us in our family Himari Nahara? Himari took his hand and said, I am. I want to live with you. Amari then started crying as she was feeling happy that she now has a family. Titsaya looked at her crying and gave a tired sigh. He went towards her and hugged her and started to pat her back slowly. Himari shoved her head in his chest to hide her crying and blushing face from him. Once she stopped crying she looked at Titsaya and asked, So you knew about me being a Nekometa all this time right? 
Tetsuya nodded. Himari who saw him nod her head said, and then too you ravaged my body daily, don't you have any shame? How are you going to make me feel that I had not been ravaged tell me? Tetsuya who heard her sighed and asked, okay, I will do any one thing that you want to ask for forgiveness, is that all right? Hearing his words Himari smiled mischievously and said, simple you have to take responsibility for it. Tetsuya was about to retort, but suddenly Himari came near his face and liked his cheek and nibbled his ear seeing that there was no way out of it. Tetsuya sighed and stopped thinking about it, and rather started thinking on how to make the others accept Himari. He knew he would hear an earful from Miyuki about all this matter. After Tetsuya was done clearing the scene he and Himari went back to his home. After entering inside they noticed that bit Miyuki and Kurumi were there in the living room. Both of them turned around and found Tetsuya along with a girl. Both of them narrowed their eyes and looked at Tetsuya and Himari. Though they were not saying anything the way they were glaring looked like they were saying, tell us what happened now Tetsuya sighed and said, calm down I will explain. Tetsuya went to the living room and Himari followed behind him. Tetsuya sat on the sofa and Miyuki and Kurumi sat beside him. Seeing both of them showing of their relationship with Tetsuya Himari's brow was twitching and decided to pay them back later. Tetsuya who heard her thoughts through telepathy had a sweat drop. He looked at his side and saw both Miyuki and Kurumi looking intently on Himari. Himari didn't wavered by their gaze and looked back at them. Tetsuya who had started to get nervous from the atmosphere around him said, Okay you two cut it out, Himari meet them they are Miyuki and Kurumi they are my he looked at them and said, My lovers, both of them nodded and smiled at his answer. Tetsuya gave a sigh of relief as thought that he just dodged a bullet, but suddenly he felt killing intent aimed at him. He nervously looked up and saw Himari smiling at him, but to Tetsuya the smile wasn't sweet at all, it was the smile of a demon. Tetsuya coughed and said, and you two meet Himari, she is the cat which lived with us for a few days. Both of them blinked their eyes and said, what together? Tetsuya was about to answer them, but Himari interrupted him and said, yes he is telling the truth. Then changed into a cat and then reversed back. Both the girls were astonished but were not shocked as they have seen many things like that. Miyuki then looked back at Tetsuya and asked, okay what is she doing here? This time too Himari answered them and said, I will be living with you all from now please take care of me in future. Miyuki looked at her with narrowed eyes and said, and why would you be living with us? Hearing her question Himari smiled mischievously and said, since Tetsuya ravaged my body so he will be taking responsibility for that, and I will be his mate too. She said focusing on the mate part. After Himari finished saying the room started to get colder. Ice had started to form around Miyuki. Miyuki turned and looked at Tetsuya and asked in a cold voice, Ani-sama what is she talking about, she is saying something about ravaging her body or something, and what is the mate business here? Tetsuya looked at her with an expressionless face and said, Do you really believe that I would do something like that Miyuki, am I that low in your view? Miyuki who heard him stopped glaring at him and ice started to melt. Miyuki started to feel worried and said, No no it's not like that, I know Ani-sama is not like that, I am sorry for doubting you. After she said that she looked down feeling ashamed. Tetsuya who saw that enveloped her in a hug. After a while Kurumi looked at Tetsuya and asked, So why is she really here? Hearing her question Miyuki too looked up at Tetsuya expecting an answer. Tetsuya and Himari then started to explain the situation to both of them, and after the explanation was over Miyuki and Kurumi looked at Himari and said, well I do sympathize with your situation, and have no problems with you living with us. Himari smiled softly at them hearing that they have no problems with her living there. But there is one question that you have still not answered, why did you say that you were Ani Sama's mate? Himari was about to answer them, but was stopped by Kurumi who said, Stop, Tetsuya you tell us. Tetsuya nodded and explained told them the reason. After hearing the reason both Miyuki looked at Himari and said, You become her mate because he played with you in your cat form. Himari nodded her head in response. They then turned towards Tetsuya and asked, And you accepted it? To which Tetsuya said, No. Hearing him all three of them blanked. After some time Himari came out of shock and jumped on him, grabbed his collar and started shaking him and said, Hey didn't you said that you would take responsibility, so what are you doing by denying about me being your mate? She continued to shake him after saying that. 
Tetsaya looked at her with an expressionless face and said, Yes I did say that I would take responsibility for what I did, and will fulfill it by taking care of you like a good cat with whom I played a lot, Tetsaya gave her a sweet smile. Tetsaya was very happy to get back at her, because had been spouting nonsense about her body being ravaged by him, and was annoyed by that, so he decided to take his revenge. After hearing his answer Miyuki and Karumi were lying on the ground and were launching very loudly. Seeing them laugh Imari started gritting her teeth. She was thinking of her as fool that she got played by Tetsaya's tricks and wanted to lash out him, but suddenly she felt something on her head. She looked up and saw Tetsaya patting her head with a smile on her face. Tetsaya looked at Himari and said, though it is a bit late I now officially invite you in our family. The other girls also stopped laughing and stood up. They placed their hands on Himari's shoulders and said, welcome to the family. She looked at both of them and then smiled and said, thank you all of you and take care of me from now on. The others smiled at her and nodded. Himari then looked at Miyuki and Karumi and said, Though I am still not his mate, bear in mind that it would not be late before he falls for me, so best of luck. She then looked at them with a competitive glare. Miyuki and Karumi also returned her glare and said, We will see about that Niko-san, they kept on glaring at each other, until they received a hit on their heads from Tetsaya, who looked at them with an expressionless face, but they could tell that he was annoyed. He looked at them and said in a cold voice, it's getting late, so go back to bed now. And Himari you would be sleeping with them understood Himari was about to whine, but when she heard her cold tone, she stood straight and nodded her head furiously like the other two. Tetsaya looked at them once more and nodded before going back to his room. The next morning Tetsaya woke up early like he is used to and went for his morning workout, but surprising for him Miyuki was not accompanying him. Tetsaya thought for a while if something was wrong and used his magic to find where she was. Getting her presence from her room he thought, they must be talking till late in the night. He shrugged his thoughts and went out. After completing his workout, he came back completely drenched in sweat. He opened the door and went inside. While walking towards the kitchen he smelled something good. When he entered the kitchen he found Himari cooking something for the breakfast. When Himari noticed someone coming inside the kitchen, she turned around to look who was there. When she found that Tetsaya came she gave him a smile and said, Breakfast will be done in a while, you should go and take a shower and get refreshed. Tetsaya also smiled back at her and nodded before going to bathroom. After taking a shower Tetsaya came out and saw that Himari was setting the table. He then went towards her and decided to help her, and said that she should go and wake the others up. Complying to his request Himari went to wake the others up, and Tetsaya set the table. All of them sat around the table and started to eat their food. Tetsaya took a bite of his food, and then looked towards Himari and said, It's delicious Himari, it's been a long time since someone made something for me, so I really appreciate it. He gave a small and gentle smile which made Himari blushed. Looking at both of them Miyuki and Karumi gave a glare of jealousy to Himari. Himari looked at them for a while and then smirked. Seeing his smirk both of them had nerves popping on their foreheads. Tetsaya ignored the three of them and continued eating his breakfast. After finishing the meal Tetsaya gave some money to the girls and asked them to accompany Himari in buying some clothes and necessities that she might require. He could not accompany them as he had some work in his restaurant. After working for a while in the kitchen Tetsaya went out to take a break and just as he stepped out of the gate, he bumped into someone and fell back. He immediately got up and said, I am sorry for bumping into you it was not intentional. He moved his hand forward for the person to get up. The person he bumped into was a girl with short black hair. The girl took his hand and said, no it's not your fault, I was not looking ahead while running, I hope you can forgive me. She bowed her head towards Tetsaya. Seeing her actions Tetsaya lightly chuckled and said, you don't have to apologize I am fine by the way I am Tetsaya Shiba nice to meet you. The girl nodded and said, nice to meet you as well I am Sona Citri, and I apologize again for bumping into you. Just as Tetsaya was about to speak a pink blur appeared in front of him, and Sona vanished from her spot. So Tan found you dot said a voice. One Isama control yourself. Said another voice. Tetsaya looked at the source of the voice and saw Surfal hugging Sona tightly. Surfal kept hugging Sona tightly, but saw Tetsaya standing near them, and got excited and enveloped him in a hug as well and said, Tetsaya-chan what are you doing here, did you missed me? 
Tetsuya who was still in her embrace said, I am here because you are literally standing in front of my restaurant, and I missed you Sarah. Sir Full who heard him became embarrassed and then smiled on hearing that he missed her. I missed you as well and this time I brought my sister as well. Said Sir Full excitedly. I am happy meeting you and all, but said Tetsuya with a happy face, but it soon turned neutral, and both him and Sona said at the same time, can you please put us down. Hearing them Surfal was a bit disappointed, but still put both of them down. When they got out of her embrace Sona bowed towards Tetsuya and said, I am sorry for my sister's actions she is a bit childish. Tetsuya waved his hands and said, no need I know how excited can she be. Sona looked up and then looked at him and asked, how do you know Anasama? Oh, she is just a regular customer and we are good friends that's all. Tetsuya then looked at her intently and said, so you are the infamous Sotan who don't like magical girls, and is cold to Sarah huh? Hearing Tetsuya talking about her Sona got embarrassed and looked towards Zerfal with hatred. When Zerfal noticed her gaze she looked away from her and then asked Tetsuya, so what are you doing Tetsuya-chan? Tetsuya looked at her with an expressionless face and said, don't try change the topic, anyways I am just taking a break from my work in the kitchen what about you? Surfal pouted cutely and then smiled and said, I just came to treat So Tan lunch and to meet Dot. Tetsaya nodded and said, then follow me the restaurant is already full you would not be able to eat there. Tetsaya turned around and started walking. Surfal didn't think anything and followed Tetsaya happily. Seeing her sister's carefree attitude, Sona sighed at her carelessness but still followed. Tetsaya went to his house and opened the door and went inside. He didn't saw anyone in there and thought that the others were still shopping. Tetsuya sent a telepathic message to them about the current situation. He invited the sisters in his home and made them seated in the living room. He gave them a cup of tea and some refreshments, and went to the kitchen to cook. While he was cooking Sona and Surfal were sitting in the living room. Sona turned towards to Surfal and asked why are we here on Asama. Surfal smiled and said, like I said I want to treat you an excellent lunch. Sona looked at Surfal intently and said, what's the real reason? Surfal smiled and said, as sharp as ever a, eh? I just wanted you to have more friend, and who knows if the you found him interesting, you can ask him to join your peerage. Sona sighed and said, he is just a normal human, and why do you want me to have more friends? Surfal stopped smiling and turned to her one e san mad and asked, how many friends do you have? Hearing her question Sona looked away and said, Oh, what are you saying I can't hear you hearing her sister Sona got agitated and said, I said that I have two friends. Realizing what she just did Sona became red from embarrassment and looked away. Seeing her embarrassed Surfal hugged her and started laughing. Tetsuya who heard them from the kitchen couldn't help but sigh. After a few moments he went back to the living room and said, Lunch is ready, let's go eat before it turns cold. Surfal nodded and jumped from the sofa with Sona in her embrace. Tetsaya looked at Sona and said in a mocking tone, you really do love your sister. Sona who heard him got red and looked away while saying, shut up. Tetsaya just laughed and led them to the dining room. In the dining room there were six plates on the table. Seeing six plates Sona and Surfal got confused and asked, is there someone joining us? Tetsaya looked at them and said, yeah my housemates will be joining I hope you don't mind. Hearing him Surfal smiled and said, it's alright we don't mind where are they. Just when Surfal asked him the doorbell rung. Tetsaya smiled and said, they're hearing his answer they all laughed, and Tetsaya went to open the door. Tetsaya came back with the others and introduced them to each other. While eating they talked a lot, and Miyuki got along well with Surfal because they both like magical girls. Seeing Miyuki getting along with Surfal Sona felt a little bitter as she also wanted to be frank with her sister, but was unable to do so. Seeing her like that Tetsaya came near her and said in a slow voice, feeling jealous eh? Hearing his voice Sona got startled and looked back at him with a blush and said, no. Tetsaya had a mischievous smile on his face and said, list and started chuckling. Seeing him chuckle Sona gritted her teeth and lashed out, no I am not. They both continued to bicker for a while, and the others left them alone, and went to watch a movie. Both of them were breathing heavily been from all the arguing that they had done. Tetsaya looked at her and said, let's leave it at that for now, we will continue it later I am tired of this. Sona didn't said anything and just nodded. They both went to the living room and saw the others watching a movie. They both sat down and watched the movie for a while, but it didn't interest them. Tetsaya looked at her and asked, want to do something else. 
Sona looked back at him and said, Sure, do you have something in mind? Tetsuya shook his head in denial. Sona thought for a while and said with a grin, Let's play chess, then I want to see you lose. Tetsuya looked at her and said with a small smile, We will see who will lose. Tetsuya brought a chess set and they both started playing. In the beginning the match looked in Sona's favor, but Tetsuya turned the tables at the later part of the match. They both were very excited playing with the match and ignored the others who were watching them attentively. After a while both Tetsuya and Sona sighed in disappointment as the match ended in a draw, but they were happy as they enjoyed match. After their match was over Surfall came towards them and said, let's go back Sona it's very late. Hearing that they were going back Miyuki became sad. Sona was sad as well, but didn't show it on her face. Tetsuya seeing all this turned towards Zerfal and said, Sarah, why don't you stay here for the night as it is already very late Miyuki would be happy as well. Zerfal looked at Miyuki who was looking at her with puppy dog eyes. Zerfal tried to resist, but at last got defeated and said, fine fine we will stay here, happy now Miyuki smiled and nodded. Tetsuya then made a mischievous face and said, you will not be disappointed as I have prepared something that you would like a lot. Surfal smiled at him but didn't expect too much from Tetsuya. Tetsuya then prepared dinner for everyone, and after dinner gave them some pajamas which belonged to Miyuki and Karumi to them and said, let's go I will show you the guest room. They nodded and followed him. Tetsuya opened the door and switched on the lights. He turned towards them and said, there is only one bed, so you need to sleep together. Hearing him Surfal face brighten up, and she hugged Tetsuya very tightly. She left him and grabbed Sona who was trying to leave the room silently. Tetsuya looked at her and gave her a mocking smirk and said, I hope you like my hospitality Sarah. Surfal nodded her head vigorously, but Sona gave a death glare to Tetsuya. Tetsuya turned around and before closing the door said, Enjoy Sona who saw him set her up and then leaving was enraged and shouted, I hate you Tetsuya. The next day when Sona woke up and saw Tetsuya she gave him a death glare. Tetsuya who saw this smiled and gave her a thumbs up and said, it looks like you enjoyed a lot. Hearing this Sona snapped grabbed his collar and started shaking him and said, like hell I enjoyed, you idiot. Surfal who looked at them smiled and said, looks like you both are getting along well. Hearing this Sona looked towards Surfal and shouted, no we are not Tetsuya, then hugged her from the back and placed his head on his shoulder and said, don't be like that, we can play chess yesterday, don't you have any fun. Sona who heard this turned her head and looked at him who was resting his head on her shoulder. Sona sighed and said, yes I did enjoy that, and I am sorry for snapping at you, now lift your head off my shoulder and stay away. Hearing her Tetsuya smiled back and said, I am glad to know that you enjoyed it, the next time you come here I would let you bath with Sarah. Sona got embarrassed and again started lashing out at him. Seeing her sister not being cold, Surfal smiled and enclosed both of them in a hug which made Sona's blush even deeper. From that day on Sona too came with Surfal whenever she visits him. Tetsuya would leave no chances to tease Sona, and because of that Sona too would lose her cool and snap at him. Even though Surfal was happy seeing that her sister had started to enjoy more, she was jealous of Tetsuya, because it was him and not her that Sona would open up to. She would often glare at Tetsuya which he responded with a smile, seeing him smile Surfal would simply sign, and let that be as Tetsuya treated her good, even though she was childish and clingy, Tetsuya would not complain or fell annoyed by her unlike others. She even thought of asking him to join her peerage, but stopped thinking about it, as she felt Sona would want to add him in her peerage. They still didn't knew that all the members of the Shiba house were related to supernatural world, and they too decided to not tell them. Tetsuya also started to train Himari the same way he started with Miyuki. Himari was low high class level at the time she joined them, and at the beginning of the training, she was overwhelmed by the amount of training Tetsuya made her do and wanted to retort, but she stopped when Miyuki said, he not even able to do this much, how see you teach in a Miyakugaya style. Every time she remembered her word along with her mocking tone, would ignite new passion in her, and stopped complaining about her training. Even though her way was wrong, Miyuki still motivated her and was often praised by Tetsuya because of it. But even though Tetsuya praised her she was a bit disturbed as she was helping a rival. Harumi also trained her in Chakra and Senjutsu, and her being a Yaokai and a Nekashu at that her progress skyrocketed, and she gained another tail. She also started to spar with Miyuki from time to time, as both of them were around the same level. 
that Saya too tagged along with them in their spar, though both of them would be against him, as they were still not able to land a hit on him, as Tetsaya held back a little less than usual. He again gave the same quest to Himari like the one he gave to Miyuki. If she would be able to land a hit on him, he would give her a weapon. Knowing that she would get a new weapon she was very excited and trained more seriously than before. Seeing that she was doing good Tetsaya also trained her in Kai manipulation which she used along with her chakra to strengthen her body, and infusing her Kai with Tauki, made her physical attacks more powerful. She had a bit problem in flying, but training regularly made her better in it. She has also started to try to control the dark energy, and with Tetsaya's help, she was able to control a slight bit of it. She was overjoyed when she was able to control the power which labeled her as cursed. She ran towards Tetsaya and hugged him while silently crying with happiness. Tetsaya did nothing and patted her head and scratched her ears. After a while Himari too started purring, and when Tetsaya let his guard down while caressing her ears, she took advantage of it and pulled his head and kissed him. Tetsaya though he was surprised didn't refuse her and enjoyed the kiss. Seeing that Miyuki and Karumi felt slightly jealous, but let it go as they knew that Himari was happy for overcoming her curse. Like others, now Karumi had something to train. Though she was not able to use magic or Kai, she was able to use Tauki which Himari taught her. She was very interested in it as it was a new concept to her, and tried her knowledge too from her previous world, to make it suitable to be used by her. Like this two years passed. Both Miyuki and Himari at the bottleneck of breakthrough to the ultimate class, but were not able to break that cap. They were very disappointed with it as their progress till now was very fast, but now their growth rate had slowed down, but they didn't thought about it too much, they just need to train much harder, and with time they would be able to break through it. Right now Tetsaya and the others were in their time chamber having a spar. Tetsaya had grown taller, and now his childish face was a little less evident as he looked slightly more matured. He now has fine muscles but was not ripped. He now looked much more handsome than before that even Sona blushed whenever she saw her smile which made Sir Full jealous, but she too felt that Tetsaya looked handsome. Himari has started to become more beautiful and had started to get mature. She also became tall, and her breasts had started to grow as well. Miyuki too has become more beautiful but was still a bit childish. She also gained a bit height and her breasts grew as well though they were smaller than Himari's. Is this all you got huh? said Tetsaya while dodging Himari's slash. He jumped back but suddenly felt something behind him. He immediately turned around and swing his sword cutting an ice shard aimed at him. He looked at Miyuki, attacking someone's back huh, I didn't knew you would use something like this Miyuki. Miyuki smiled at him and said, do you think that we have any chance of hitting you if you tried to fight you nicely on Isama? Tetsaya didn't said anything and gave her a bright smile. Miyuki sighed and then looked at him with seriousness. Tetsai also stopped and jumped up and avoided the slash from Himari. Don't forget about me. Himari smirked and also followed him, and both of them started clashing their swords. Miyuki didn't waste it any time and launched multiple ice spears accelerated with wind magic towards Tetsai. Feeling that the ice spears were coming towards him he kicked Himari who blocked it with her katana, but still flew back. Tetsaya started to store fire energy in his sword, and slashed forward, releasing a huge wave of fire towards Miyuki, melting the spears in the way. Seeing the wave coming towards her Miyuki stabbed her sword on the ground, and a thick wall of ice formed in front of her, but immediately flew back when she noticed that her wall would not be able to hold back the wave. Tetsaya just stood there and placed the sword on his shoulders and said, what happened, giving up. Miyuki and Himari looked at him and gritted their teeth. Just as they were about to give up Tetsaya said, how about this then, even if one of you is able to hit me, I would take both of you shopping. Hearing this their eyes lit up. They looked at each other and nodded. Himari started to add chakra to her katana, making it sharper and faster, and Miyuki started making multiple spears of eyes, and again accelerating them with wind magic. Miyuki looked towards Himari for confirmation who nodded in response. Just as she nodded Miyuki launched all the spears towards Tetsaya, who again started to store gyre energy in his sword, but was interrupted by Himari, who was cladded in dark energy, and slashed towards Tetsaya. Tetsaya dodged, but Himari again slashed towards him. He kept on blocking and dodging her slashes. Suddenly Himari jumped back and many spears came near Tetsaya. Tetsaya gripped his sword tighter and started slashing towards the spears, destroying them with a blade heated with fire magic. 
Seeing him destroying the spears Miyuki said something to Himari, and after listening to her whole plan, she nodded in approval. Miyuki started channeling more mana through her body, and made a giant boulder and launched towards Tetsuya. Tetsuya who just finished destroying the spears suddenly, saw her surroundings getting darker. He looked up and blew a whistle before covering his sword with wind and fire, and sent a firestorm towards the boulder, but just as he sent the firestorm towards the boulder, Himari came from behind and attacked him. Tetsuya who was busy blocking the boulder, made another sword in his other hand, and blocked her strike. But he was surprised as this time Himari grabbed his hand, rather than attacking him again. Soon he felt some dot coldness coming towards him, and saw that Miyuki was coming to attack him. Miyuki came too close to him and seeing that there was no other choice, Tetsuya lifted Himari and threw her at Miyuki. Tetsuya immediately used this chance and added more power to the firestorm, and got rid of the boulder. He then looked at the girls and said, I guess this is enough. The girls didn't said anything but smiled at him. Tetsuya was confused by it, but then immediately looked at the arm which was held by Himari, and saw a fine scratch on it and said, I guess I will take you shopping this weekend. When Tetsuya was busy looking at Miyuki coming closer, she used her claws and mad a slash on his arms. The girls jumped happily and gave each other high five, and started discussing about the date. Tetsuya who heard them could only shake his head and sighed. After the spar was over Tetsuya was approached by Miyuki and Himari, who were looking at him with an expectation. Seeing their look Tetsuya chuckled and patted their head and praised them. After a while he stopped much to the girl's disappointment. He then looked at Himari and said, since you were able to land a hit on me, I guess I owe you a weapon. After saying that a light shine in his hands which made the others close their eyes because of the brightness. When the light dimmed down they opened their eyes and saw Tetsuya holding a katana with a blue hilt and covered in a blue shath kurakara. Himari was about to take it from his hands, but Tetsuya stopped her and said, wait a minute let me first explain about this weapon to you. Himari stopped and nodded before looking at him intently. Tetsuya also nodded and said, this is no normal katana, with this you would be able to control flames more specifically blue flames which are much more fiercer than normal flames, you are able to activate or deactivate the flames at will, but the control over the flame will depend on your proficiency. If not handled carefully you can even injure an ally or yourself too, so always bear that in mind. Seeing Himari nod Tetsuya smiled and gave him the katana before jumping back with Miyuki. Himari on receiving the katana was very excited. She slowly took it out of its sheath and careezed her hand over the blade. She then willed the flames to appear, and then suddenly the whole blade was covered in blue flames. She was mesmerized by the flames and stared at it for a while. She then thought of using the flames just like Tetsuya did in their spar and waved her sword. A large amount of flames come out of the katana but seemed uncontrollable. Seeing that Himari was unable to control the flames, Tetsuya stepped forward and used his devouring magic, and devoured all the flames. Being all out of energy Himari fell but was caught by Tetsuya before she hit the floor. She was about to thank him she received and hit on her head from Tetsuya who looked at her with a displeased expression and said, didn't I told you that the control depends on your proficiency, and can even hurt you because of the lack of control. Why did you do something dangerous, do you seriously wanted to injure yourself and make me worry huh? Hearing him Himari became sad but felt a bit happy that he was worried about her. She hugged him tightly and said, I am sorry I won't do something like this again. Thank you for worrying about me. She gave him a peck on his cheek, and then buried her head back in his chest, but was soon pulled out by Miyuki, who was looking at her with a glare and said, you have some nerve by making Ani-sama worried, and the taking his advantage huh? Himari who heard her sighed and said, you are right I should not take his advantage in that situation. Miyuki looked at her with a shocked expression, but that soon turned into an angry one when she saw what she did next. Himari looked towards Tetsuya and pulled his face and gave him a deep kiss. She released herself from the kiss with a string of saliva attached to her mouth, with a heavy breathing and said, rather than taking advantage, I should give him a reward for saving me instead. She looked towards Miyuki with a victorious smug which provoked her more making her lash out at her. Tetsuya who saw them arguing sighed and left the room. He didn't want it to involve himself into their argument because he knew that even though they bicker a lot, they still treat each other as sisters. He went to take a shower to refresh him after all that training, and also that he was very sweaty from the practice. 
After taking a bath Tetsaya changed his clothes and went to help in his restaurant. After completing his shift Tetsaya went back to his home. After entering his home he found Himari preparing dinner. He went towards with the intention to help her, but she said, just sit back and relax. Let me cook today as you must be tired too. Tetsaya tried to protest, but Himari didn't listen to him, and he finally left the dinner to Himari. Seeing as he had nothing better to do he decided to take a stroll. He turned towards the others and asked, you guys want anything, I am going for a stroll. The others thought for a while and told him what they wanted. Karumi also decided to go inside Tetsaya as it had been a while since she had been there. Tetsaya changed his clothes and set off along with Karumi inside of him. They both were talking to each other through their mental link, while Tetsaya was greeting some people along the way. Many people in his area knew him, and they had a good impression of him. After buying the things which he required Tetsaya was in his way back when he suddenly felt a supernatural presence. Karumi too felt it, and they both decided to check it. Tetsaya stored the things in his pocket dimension and started moving towards the location. In a rundown warehouse in Kuo, many cloaked people were present and were talking to each other, more like trying to pass their time. They seemed to be waiting for someone, but it looked like the people who they were waiting for were late. Unable to bear the boredom and feeling frustrated, one of the cloaked persons slammed his fist in the wall and said, they are clearly mocking us making the magician's faction of the cow's brigade wait so long those devils seem to have a death wish or what. Hearing him many other people in the group raised their voices as well. All of them were very irritated, and when one of them rose their voice the others too let out their emotions and started to complain as well. Boss I say that we should kill them the moment they arrive. They have to know that we are not mere pushovers who they can control, even if they are devils we are not any less formidable than them. The boss of those magician didn't said anything and looked at his subordinates and said in a cold voice, shut up hearing his cold tone, the subordinate stopped complaining and looked at him waiting to answer them. The boss looked at everybody and then said, I know that you all are very irritated, I too am bored. But this mission is important we the magicians need to get hold of any kind of magic power that we can get. We will definitely increase our strength and rule over this world, but we need to have patience, the thing that we will get today will increase our power by a huge margin, so we cannot do anything before we get our hands on it. Hearing their leaders answer the subordinates calmed down and now waited patiently for the devils to arrive. They too wanted to get their hands on power because in supernatural world the more power you have the larger influence you will have, and having higher influence, can be a good thing to save one's life from time to time. While they had again started talking to each other, a magic circle appeared inside the warehouse, and five people came out of the circle. All five of them were men, but one of them were carrying two girls on his shoulders. The one in the middle of them came forward and said, sorry for being late, I hope that you didn't wait for long. The magicians who heard him internally cursed him and all of them thought, like hell we didn't wait for long, we waited for three hours, a freaking three hours. Is all that time just a shit to you? The man who was the boss of the magicians looked towards the devil with an expressionless face and asked, have you brought that, and I would also like to inquire why you were so late. The devil who heard him was dissatisfied with the magician's answer, but still held his cool and said, yes, we have that, and we are late because we ran into a girl who tried to stop us. Man seriously a bad and clan's magic sure holds up to its recognition that took a hell out of us. When the magician heard this his eyes widened and he looked towards to the two girls on one of the devil's shoulders. The man again looked back at the devil who was talking to him and said, you mean to say that you have brought both a leviathan and an abaddon huh? The devil looked back with a smug smile and said, yes we have both of them, you want to buy the other one too. The magician didn't thought too much and said, of course getting the hands on one of the 72 pillars magic is not an opportunity one comes across so easily. The devil's smile broadened and he said, of course and you don't have to worry about restraining them as the leviathan is asleep, and we have broken the limbs of the abaddon, and her magic is depleted already now let's talk about the prick, just as he was about to continue the devil was engulfed in a tower of flames. The other devils who came along with him were shocked by this, and looked towards the magicians with a hateful expression. The boss of the magicians looked at the other devils and said, thank you for adding a bonus to our request, and since you have completed your task you all can die. The other magicians who heard him came out of shock and laughed evilly. They understood that their boss was never going to let them live from the beginning. 
They all started chanting their spells and were ready to attack the devils. The devils who now understood the motives of the magicians, started preparing their own magic. Suddenly a large number of projectiles were fired towards the devils. The devils who saw the number of projectiles coming towards him were very scared and angry. They immediately set up a barrier to protect them, but they knew that the barrier would not hold on long enough. The devil who was carrying the girls was unable to take it any longer and said, you pieces of shit you should know that the girls are still with us and will die too. The boss magician who heard this looked at him with an amused expression and said, you mean these girls and tapped his staff on the ground. When he said that the girls vanished from the devil's shoulder and appeared besides the magician, the devils were shocked by this and were panicking as their bargaining chip was now in their enemy's hands. The head magician was about to attack the devils when suddenly the door of the warehouse opened and a boy came in and raised his hand and said, yo. All the people present there looked towards the manor more clearly to Tsaya as if he was stupid and were wondering what a human was doing there. Even the blonde-haired girl whose limbs were broken, looked towards the boy who came and was also wondering what he was doing. Some of the magicians came out of the stupor and then said, What the hell are you doing here kid, this is no place for playing go back now or you will die. And released some of his aura and directed it towards Tetsaya, so as to scare him. Tetsaya who noticed the small amount of aura shrugged his shoulders and asked, What are you guys doing here so late at night? The magicians were surprised on seeing that Tetsaya was not affected by their aura, and got angry one of the magicians walked towards him and grabbed his collar and said, you didn't hear or what, want to have an early death you shit. Tetsaya who was still expressionless sighed and said, you know what forget it people like you are not used to people asking you politely. Tetsaya then looked at the magician and turned him into stone psyche's power, and then freed himself. All the people who saw that were shocked. The magicians who were still young or new were very angry and wanted to attack him, but the sensible and experienced ones were now wary of him. The devils were wary of him as they didn't know whether he was on their side or not. The girl with blonde hair was also having the same thoughts as the other devils, she couldn't trust anyone there. Seeing that the others were still silent Tetsaya said, I will ask again what you people are doing here late at night. Hearing his question one of the younger magician yelled, It's none of your business kid stop interfering if you know what's good for you. Tetsaya glared at the person who said that making him taking a step back in fear. He then looked around the room, and then his eyes landed on the two girls besides the boss magician. The blonde haired girl noticed Tetsaya looking at her, and as if getting the message she made a determined expression and said, Those devils kidnapped us and brought us here in order to sell us. The devils and the magicians looked at the girl with hatred, but then again looked back at Tetsaya when they heard his voice, is that girl speaking the truth? Hearing him another inexperienced magician came forward and said, that's right now scram before we kill you. Tetsaya then looked at the people present there once more, and then gave a tired sigh and said, why is this town always has something illegal going on? Oi which faction do you guys belong to? Again the same magician answered him and said, we are from the magician faction of the cow's bry. Just as he was about to finish the boss magician fired a spell at him and said, why the hell are you giving him information so easily? Tetsaya looked at the boss with a dumbfounded expression and said, you only realized it just now. All the others looked at him for answers. The man noticed all the people looking at him, he gave a fake cough and said, state your purpose for coming here kid. Now you just changed the subject, oh well I came here because I sensed some disturbance in mana, and now that I know that you all are doing something illegal, I have to do some extermination. Man keeping the town clean because of Yasaka asked me to is very tiring. Well whatever just surrender, and I will not kill you. The devils and the magicians who heard him started laughing and said, you will kill his hay, some of you take care of the best meanwhile we take care of the devils. The boss was about to turn towards the devils but stopped. What he saw made him very afraid. He saw his men getting disappear in small light particles at the same time when he asked them to attack Tetsaya. Tetsaya was holding two silver guns in his hands, and his hands were aiming in the direction in which the bodies of magicians disappeared. He turned towards the boss and said, don't say that I didn't warn you. Tetsaya said and started firing at many people present in the room. All of them got shocked and scared and decided to fight back. The magicians started firing spells at him to which Tetsaya replied by either dodging or nullifying the spells. All of them were driven into a corner, but then suddenly the boss of the magicians came forward. 
Seeing him walk in front of them many of his subordinates started cheering and saying stuff like do it boss or we know you can do it. The boss stood still and looked at Tetsuya with determination. Seeing him his men and even the devils got excited. The boss raised his staff and said, looks like I have to use my trump card. The people who heard him looked towards him excitedly and began discussing about his trump card. The man raised his hands even higher. The others who saw him all thought, here it comes, but then suddenly the man kneeled down in dogs and shouted, forgive me I surrender. And then everyone had a dramatic fall except for Tetsuya who knew what the man was planning through his telepathy. Tetsuya decided to play along with it and lowered his gun and said, so you finally decided to surrender huh? The boss looked up and nodded his head and said, there is just one thing that I want to do. When he said that a large magic circle appeared on the ground, and a lot more magicians emerged from the circle. Seeing the large number of magicians the fellow magicians regained their confidence, and the devils followed their example and summoned their teammates. The devils and the magicians looked towards Tetsuya who was still neutral and started to laugh maniacally. The others also explained the situation to the ones who just arrived, and they too joined them in their laughter. The blonde-haired girl was now worried and scared on seeing the large number of devils and magicians, and thought that she has no way of escape now. The devil and the magician boss pointed their finger at Tetsuya and said, now how will you defeat all of us at the same time we in total are around 50, and that too without adding those devils, so what will you do now kid beg for mercy, and maybe I can give you a painless death. And then pointed his finger on the ground. Tetsuya looked around the warehouse and gave a tired sigh. He brought his hand close and made a sign and said, multi-shadow clone jutsu, and then around 500 Tetsuyas appeared with a puff of smoke. Seeing the sheer number of clones the eyes of all the people in the room were almost popping out, their throats got dried and were unable to move because of shock. All the Tetsuyas then pointed their guns at them and said, now what? Will. You. Do. Hearing him all of the devils and magicians threw their weapons and deactivated their magic, and then all at the same time went into Doggy's a position and said, we are sorry. We are ready to surrender. Hearing them Tetsuya gave a small smile and said, too late and all of them pulled the trigger at the same time, and everyone in the warehouse except for the girls and Tetsuya, vanished in light particles. After all of the magicians and the devils were killed, Tetsuya looked towards the two girls and asked, want some help? The blonde who heard him got out of her stupor and then looked at Tetsuya as if he was a monster, she was still hesitant of him and didn't answer him. Tetsuya who was waiting for her to answer sighed and started walking towards her. He squatted down and started to use his magic and to heal her, but didn't heal her instantly, as he still didn't know what were her intentions. The blonde hair girl noticed that Tetsuya was walking towards her and wanted to put up her guard but was unable to. When she saw him crouching down and moving his hand towards her, she closed her eyes and readied herself for more pain, but instead of pain she felt a soothing sensation easing her pain. She looked up and saw that Tetsuya was the reason of that sensation, and then she relaxed a bit and asked, who are you? Why are you helping me? Tetsuya looked back at her and said in an amused voice, oh now you are willing to talk eh, but you should know that it is common etiquette to introduce yourself first before asking the others. When she heard Tetsuya she blushed a bit due to embarrassment and said, sorry for my rudeness, my name is Kusha Abad and a devil, and I thank you for saving not me and the lady beside me. Tetsuya nodded and said, I am Tetsuya Shiba a human, and I don't misunderstand I only saved you so as to interrogate you, and if I find you doing something that shouldn't be done here, you will experience a similar fate as those men like before. Kusha who heard him shuddered on the thought of what Tetsuya could do to her. She looked in his eyes and said, you don't have to worry I will answer you to the extent I am able to, but nothing too personal. Tetsuya nodded and removed her hand and stood up and said, I have healed you quite a bit to the extent that you will be back to normal in a week or so, and now suddenly Kurumi appeared beside him. Tetsuya turned towards Kurumi and said, take them home and put them in the guest room, and don't forget to restrain their magic. I will come back after cleaning the mess here. Kurumi nodded and carried both the girls on her shoulders, and then looked towards Tetsuya. Tetsuya then formed a magic circle, and Kurumi stepped on it and the teleported to his home. Tetsuya gave a tired sigh and started to massage his temples and thought, these type of things are increasing in the town lately, I will ask Yasaka later to let me cuddle her tails and ears as compensation. 
Tetsuya then looked at one of the corners of the warehouse and said, I know you are hiding there, so are you coming out peacefully or you want me to do it in a rougher way? Tetsuya waited for a moment after saying that, and when he still didn't receive an answer he moved his hand in that direction, and then various ropes made of magic came out of the ground and then launched in the direction. When the ropes reached the corner he heard a loud nigh. Tetsuya motioned through his hands, and then the ropes started coming back with a busty girl who was entangled in the ropes. When the woman was in front of him Tetsuya looked at her with an expressionless face, but on the inside was a different story. On seeing the girl wearing black kimono with cat ears only one thought came to his mind, holy s-h-i-t-t-t. -t -t. It's Kuroka, I didn't know that I would meet her this soon. Today is definitely a lucky day meeting three characters on the same day. I really want to rub her ears no 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 control yourself Tetsuya control you can do it later. Kuroka looked at the boy in front of her and then asked in her usual playful voice, Naya you like this types of kinky plays huh? Tetsuya didn't answer her and pointed his gun at her. Kuroka who saw the gun got scared as she had seen his power with her own eyes but didn't show it on her face. She looked back at Tetsuya and said, wait wait don't be too stiff I will talk so ask whatever you like. Tetsuya lowered his gun and asked, who are you and what are you doing here and don't dare lie, I will know it instantly. Hiroka's expression didn't change and she said, names Kuroka and Nekamata as you can see, virgin and my three sizes, just as she was about to continue, Tetsuya again pointed his gun and said, what were you saying? Kuroka didn't flinch, but on the inside she was very afraid. She pouted and said, you are no fun Naya, I came here to spy on those rogue guys which you killed just now to know what they were planning Naya. Tetsuya used his telepathy and knew that she was telling the truth or not, and found that she was indeed saying the truth. He looked in her eyes and asked, which faction do you belong to were you also trying to do trafficking? Tetsuya narrowed his eyes and glared at her. Seeing his glare Kuroka for the first time changed her expression into that of panic and said, no no no, we were not doing anything of that sorts, I just came here to spy on them that's all Naya. Tetsuya looked at her for a while, but the suddenly he heard a growl. He looked at Kuroka's stomach which was making a noise, and the look back at Kuroka, who was laughing awkwardly with a slight blush on her face. On seeing her expression Tetsuya sighed and the put his gun down, and then released her. Kuroka instantly fell on her butt. She looked back at Tetsuya with fake tears in her eyes and said, is this how you treat a lady Naya? You should treat a delicate flower like me with care Naya. Tetsuya scoffed and said, yeah like someone delicate would be sent to spy on that many and powerful enemies, and offered his hand. Kuroka took her hand and then stood up while rubbing her butt and said, HMPH, who said a delicate person cannot be skilled Naya. Tetsuya sighed in annoyance and said, whatever come with me you are hungry right let's go, my treat. Kuroka who heard him hugged her body and said, oh you want to take advantage of me by making me come with you for food. You pervert Naya. Tetsuya looked back at her and gave her a head chop and said, quit playing around either come with me or leave, I have many other things to do. Kuroka rubbed her head and said, hey didn't I say that I am delicate, handle me with care Naya. Tetsuya ignored her and asked, you coming or not? Kuroka used her senjutsu and knew that Tetsuya didn't have any ill will towards her. She HMPH and jumped on his back and said, okay let's go. Tetsuya looked at her and asked, why are you on my back? Kuroka pressed her breasts against his back and licked his ear and said, what, don't tell me you don't like the sensation on your back Naya. Tetsuya blushed a bit and then looked in front and started walking. Kuroka who saw his blush felt proud of her body. She then started poking his cheek and asked, by the way what's your name Naya, you haven't introduced yourself yet Naya. Tetsuya came out of the warehouse and looked back at her and said, my name is Tetsuya Shiba Human, nice to meet you. Kuroka now saw his face clearly as they were now outside the warehouse and blushed a bit. She regained her composure soon and said, nice to meet you as well Naya Tetsuya and Kuroka kept on talking to each other, while Tetsuya was walking back to his restaurant. Kuroka suddenly hugged him tighter and asked, so asking you out of curiosity why didn't you kill me, were you mesmerized by my beauty Naya? Tetsuya kept silent for a while and said, well I felt no malice from you like I sensed from those guys I killed, and you even spoke the truth, though you were at gunpoint at that time, but still you didn't lie, and you were also able to mask you fear very well, and it was also a waste to kill a cute girl like you without any reason. 
He then looked back at her and said, don't misunderstand though, make a wrong move and you are dead. Kuroka didn't said anything and laid out her head on his shoulder and blew in his ear and said, oh I am cute Naya Tetsuya shuddered and blushed a bit and said, yuck you are but don't do such a thing again. Kuroka smiled mischievously, but also felt happy on bring called cute by him. On the whole way she kept doing various things to tease Tetsuya, making him blush and feel embarrassed much to his displeasure. After reaching their home Tetsuya put Kuroka off his back and then opened the door. As soon as the door opened he was tackled by a blur. Tetsuya caught the blur and then lifted it up. Tetsuya saw Miyuki who was looking at him with a cold expression. Before Tetsuya could say anything Miyuki grabbed his shoulder and started shaking hum and said, Ani-sama why are you so late, who are the girls you sent earlier? Am I not enough for you? Miyuki then looked at Kuroka who was standing behind Tetsuya seeing all that with an amused expression. Miyuki again looked back at Tetsuya and said, you brought another girl like the thieving cat here, why Ani-sama why? She kept on tightening her grip while shaking him. Tetsuya who was being shaken was thinking, here we go again. Tetsuya who had enough of being shaken, held Miyuki's head and gave her a kiss. Miyuki stopped shaking him and started to melt in the kiss. They both were enjoying the moment when suddenly Miyuki was pulled back by Kurumi. Kurumi dragged Miyuki back and said, that should be enough for now, and don't forget you are not the only lover here. From the side Hamari raised her hand and said, that's right there is me too, now come Tetsuya give me a kiss, and maybe we can advance further. As soon as she said that an ice shard grazed her cheek and there was some blood flowing from the cut. A clear TCH was heard by all of them. Everyone looked at Miyuki whose hand was aimed at Himari. She glared at Himari and said, Oi thieving cat listen properly if someone is going to take on Isama's virginity that would be me. The Mari's claws came out, and she too glared at Miyuki and said, dare to repeat it again. And started to attack Miyuki. Miyuki also didn't stand still and started attacking Himari. They kept on fighting for a while and wrecking the house. Tetsuya sighed in annoyance and started releasing his aura and said in a cold voice, stop this right now. All the people who experienced the pressure fell on the ground and were amazed on seeing Tetsuya's power. Both Miyuki and Himari wanted to refute, but when they noticed Tetsuya's glare, they shuddered and nodded their heads in approval. Tetsuya stopped releasing his aura making everyone taking a deep breath simultaneously. Tetsuya looked at Himari and Miyuki and said, clean all this mess right now or no dinner for you tonight. Himari looked at him and said, hey I was the one who cooked tonight how can I not be allowed to eat it? Tetsuya looked back at her and said, am. I not. Clear. Himari immediately nodded her head fiercely and gave a salute. Tetsuya nodded and said, Kurumi how are those two? Kurumi looked back at him and said, they both are fine, I have placed them in the guest room, but they both are sleeping right now, they must have a rough day. Tetsuya nodded and said, well whatever I will interrogate them tomorrow. He then gestured towards Kuroka and said, well she is Kuroka Anekashu, she will be having dinner with us tonight, but if you find her doing anything suspicious feel free to attack her, but only if you find her acting suspiciously. He said the last part while looking at Miyuki who averted her eyes. Kuroka who heard him pulled his hands between her cleavage and said, you are terrible Tetsuya, you are saying such mean things, even after you did that to me. And started sniffing. Suddenly she felt killing intent aimed at her. Tetsuya also noticed the killing intent and said, if you don't want to die, I would advise it would be best if you explain them properly. Hiroka then looked at the girls and saw them preparing their claws and magic to attack her. Miyuki glared at her and said, you are trying to seduce Ani-sama, this is very suspicious, I should kill you. Kuroka immediately left his hand and did a dogiza and explained all the things that happened at the warehouse to them. Kuroka was still kneeling down, and Miyuki was pointing her sword at her and said, so you were just tied down by Ani-sama that's all. To which Kuroka nodded fiercely. Miyuki narrowed her eyes and said, so you are not trying to seduce him right. Kuroka looked back at her and said, yup I am not trying to seduce him, even though he is handsome, strong and the body which I felt through his shirt, she started drooling a bit while imaging Tetsuya's body. Miyuki saw that and immediately slashed her. Hiroka who suddenly came back to her senses, dodged the attack and hid behind Tetsuya, while holding him tightly and said, save me Tetsuya she is scary, she will definitely kill me. Before he could say anything Miyuki came in front of him and said, Ani-sama stand aside I will kill this bitch right now. 
Tetsuya looked at her and said, Miyuki language Miyuki snapped and said, Fuck the shut up about language right now I will fucking kill that bitch right now. All the people who looked at her had only one thought scary. Tetsuya was about to say something, but was again interrupted by Kuroka who looked at Miyuki and said, Hey it's not my fault, how can one not be enchanted by a body and face like that, it's only natural even you all like that about him right? Kuroka lifted Tetsuya's shirt making everyone present in the room look at him with a blush. Miyuki too lowered her sword and started looking intently at Tetsuya's chiseled body. Tetsuya noticed that everyone was now quiet and said, Miyuki leave her for now, I have to ask her some questions, and I was also the one who invited her for dinner, so if you kill her, it would make me look bad. Miyuki nodded her head and was still blushing. She looked at Kuroka and said, Okay Ani-sama I will let her live for now, hey you be thankful to Ani-sama's kindness, or you would be dead by now. Kuroka hurriedly nodded her head and then grabbed Tetsuya's legs and said, Thank you so much Tetsuya-sama because of you I am alive, I will definitely pay you back, you can even use my body however you like. She said the last part by grabbing her boobs. Miyuki started gritting her teeth and said, I should have known, you should be better off dead. And then again started attacking her. Tetsuya sighed and then looked at Himari and Kurumi. They too looked back at him and as if all of them had the same thought, they left the room without saying anything making Kuroka glare at them. After all the mess was over Tetsuya had to prepare the food once again, as the food prepared by Himari was ruined during the fight between Miyuki and Kuroka. They all had dinner after that, and Kuroka left and promised to visit him from time to time. The next day after waking up Tetsuya did his morning workout and then took a bath. After taking a bath Tetsuya decided to check on his two guests and went towards the guest room. He knocked on the door and said, I am coming in and entered the room. Inside the room he saw two girls one blonde and the other having purple colored hair lying on the bed. Gusha turned her head and looked at him and said, you have no manners or what, you entered the room even before I gave you the permission, what would you do if I was changing my clothes? Tetsuya looked at her with a neutral expression and said, First, this is my house so I can go anywhere I want. Second, all your limbs are literally broken how the hell would you be able to change your clothes? Kusha who heard her reasoning blushed in embarrassment and looked away. Tetsuya didn't give it much thought and said, Anyway since you have woken up, I would like to ask you some questions, and I hope you cooperate. Kusha looked at him seriously and said, Okay ask whatever you want, and I will try my best to tell you what you want to know, but like I said before I am not going to tell you anything way too personal. The atmosphere was turning very serious, but was broken when a growl was heard from Kusha's stomach. Tetsuya looked at her gave a mocking smile. When she saw the smile her blush deepened and she said, It's not like that it's just that I have not eaten anything since yesterday. Tetsuya chuckled a bit and said, you don't have to be embarrassed about it. Wait for a bit I will go and get us some breakfast it's nearly time for that. Tetsuya went out of the room leaving behind a blushing Kusha who looked at the door for a while and then turned away. Tetsuya came back after a while with some sandwiches and then pulled a chair and sat beside Kusha. He took a sandwich from the plate and moved his hand towards Kusha's mouth. Kusha looked at the sandwich for a while hesitating. Tetsuya noticed it and took a bite from it, and ate it and said, there's nothing mixed in it, so you don't have to worry about it. Now say ah. And gave a small smile. Kusha wanted to refute him, but knew that her hands were broken, and she could not eat by herself. She gritted her teeth but still took a bite, and immediately got taken aback by the taste. Seeing her pleasant expression Tetsuya smiled unconsciously as it always made him happy when others eat his food with a pleasant expression. Kusha looked at the smiling Tetsuya and was mesmerized by him. She kept staring him for a while, but regained her consciousness when Tetsuya touched her mouth with a sandwich. She unconsciously took a bite and ate it. After eating for a while she suddenly remembered that she had an indirect kiss with him, and immediately blushed. She wanted to complain about it, but when she noticed that Tetsuya wasn't even the slightest bit affected by it, she stopped and didn't say anything. Tetsuya noticed the change in her and used his telepathy to know what she was thinking. When Tetsuya heard her thoughts he sighed and then bowed his head and said, I am sorry for making you uncomfortable. And then began eating a sandwich himself. Kusha who heard his apology smiled and thought, he isn't that bad she then came out of her thoughts and said, so what do you want to ask me? Tetsuya stopped eating and made a serious expression and said, I already know your name and that you are a devil. 
What I want to know is whether you are astray or not, and why you got involved with those people in the first place, and who is the one beside you. Gusha also adopted a serious expression and said, No I am not a stray devil, and I got involved with them while completing a mission for my master. What mission and who is your master? Asked Itsaya. Kusha hesitated for a bit and said, I am the queen of Sirayard Bale, you know about the devil P system right? Titsaya just nodded to her question. Gusha also nodded and said, You see someone close to my master is suffering from a similar disease like the girl besides me, and he asked me to check whether the doctors had made some progress about her condition, so I went to check on her and then, and then you saw her being kidnapped and decided on your own to save her, without even knowing how much strong your opponent is. I don't know whether to praise your bravery or ridicule you for your foolishness. Interrupted Tetsaya. When Kusha heard him she became angry and wanted to argue, but was again interrupted by Tetsaya who said, You didn't even consider anything before considering your actions at all. How would your king would have felt if he came to know that you got harmed because of the mission he sent you on huh, do you know how your friends and family would have responded to it? Tetsaya raised his voice a bit, making Kusha taken aback by shock. She felt sad and discouraged about her actions and was very depressed, but suddenly she felt something on top of her head. She looked up and saw Titsaya patting her head. She observed him for a while and asked, What are you doing? Patting your head no I am asking you why are you doing it? Titsaya sighed and said, During all these years I have learned that patting someone's head affectionately is the best way to make them feel better when they are depressed. Titsaya looked back at her and said, If you hate it I will stop. Kusha didn't say anything, and Titsaya smiled and said, Though you were reckless, I guess you do deserve some praise for saving that girl. Kusha became confused and said, I didn't save her, you were the one who saved us. Titsaya smiled at her and said, But if it weren't for you delaying them they would have arrived in the town while I was working, and I would have ignored them, and she would be sold to those magicians. Kusha who was disheartened just a moment ago smiled and said, You know what you are not as bad as I thought you were. Titsaya didn't said anything and kept on patting her head silently, but suddenly the room got chilled, and then both of them heard a voice, Ani Sama you are flirting behind my back. After consoling Miyuki for a while Titsaya sighed in relief. Didi again looked back at Kusha who was looking at him, and was appreciating his help, she was feeling that she just dodged a bullet, and was very grateful to Titsaya. Titsaya thought for a while and then said, Kusha it would take a while for you to recover, so if you want you can stay here for the time being. Kusha shook her head and said, No there is no need for that just remove the restraints, and I will contact my master. This time Titsaya shook his head and said, Sorry I cannot do that because even if I trust you, a bit, but you are still a devil, and I don't know what would be the intentions of your master and the other devils after knowing about us. Gusha wanted to say that her master wasn't like that, but thinking from Titsaya's point of view, she realized that what he said was true, she then sighed and said, then what about this girl, she is in need of medical treatment, and should be sent to the underworld for that. Titsaya looked at her weirdly for a while and then said, are you really stupid or what? The girl beside you is a leviathan, a descendant of an original Mayu, do you really think that some mere low-class devils could kidnap her for selling her that easily? Suddenly realization hit her, and she looked at Titsaya with widened eyes and said, You mean to say that she was being sold by the higher-ups from the Devil Society? Titsaya nodded and said, Yeah that's what I am saying. You must have noticed it as well right, something like no surveillance cameras in her ward or no guards around her room. Kusha thought for a while and then nodded her head and said, Yeah just like you said while I was visiting her, I didn't see any guards there. Titsaya sighed and said, you devils really are twisted, well anyway she must have been sold as she was not useful to them, as they cannot extract any information from her as she was unconscious, and susting her medical bills must be draining them, so she was sold in order to fill those bills I guess. Kusha was enraged at the higher ups, but knew that she couldn't do anything about it, she didn't have any evidence about it against them, she gave a tired sigh and said, nonetheless it doesn't solve the matter of her needing medical care at all, what should we do about that? Titsaya didn't said anything and went towards Ingvald and grabbed his hand and closed his eyes. Kusha looked at him intently and was wondering what he was doing. Soon Titsaya opened his eyes and said, I can cure her so that problem solved she just needs some magic that's all. It might take a day or two depending on how much magic her body can take at a time. When Kusha heard him her eyes lit up. She looked at him expectantly. 
Tetsuya noticed her looking at him and asked, what? Gusha didn't hesitate and asked, if you are able to heal her can you check on the other person that I talked about? Tetsuya remained silent and thought, helping Sereard now would mean exposing devils about my presence, and all, and all of that will be very annoying, if they start to pester us to join their peerages, not to mention there are too many perverts and womanizers among the devils. Gusha started to get worried as Tetsuya remained silent, she thought that Tetsuya was going to deny her request. Well she thought that Tetsuya was thinking about the pros and cons of revealing himself, and finally decided to help him and thought, if they become too much of a nuisance, then there would be one less faction in this world. Just hope that they don't go on my bad side for their own safety. He looked back at Kusha and said, okay I will help her, but make sure that the people on your side don't annoy me too much otherwise I cannot promise about their well-being. Tetsuya just gave a smile making Kusha shudder on thinking what he did that night in the warehouse. She nodded her head and said, I promise that I will make sure to let them know about it, and I thank you a lot for accepting my request. Tetsuya then looked back at Ingvold and started transferring his magic to her and could feel that her sacred gear was absorbing all that energy. He sighed and then sent a telepathic message to the others and told them about his talk with Kusha and also asked them to not slack on their training making them complain, but accepted immediately when he promised them to take them on a date. Tetsuya sighed, but he also felt happy that Miyuki and the others loved him a lot. He had decided that whoever tried to interfere him or the others in the future would only suffer their own doom by his hands. He has the power and he would use it against others if they stand in his way. He then looked back at the girls present in the room and saw that both of them are sleeping peacefully. He looked at Kusha and thought, even though I am not a guy who take advantages of others while they are asleep but to sleep so defenseless when there is a guy in the room. He smiled at her and thought, well let's not break her faith in me. He closed his eyes and laid back in a relaxed position with a satisfied look on his face, but suddenly his expression changed to that of panic and thought, shit Sarah will annoy me way too much, once she will know that I am a part of the supernatural world. Man I only hope that she don't get mad at me well if that situation comes, I will use Sona as a bait I guess. And shrugged his shoulder and went back to sleep. Somewhere in the underworld at two different locations two girls suddenly sneezed. Sarah falls thought. What's this did so Tan is thinking about me or it could be Tetsuya as well. Hmm now that I think about it he has grown a lot since then, and he is much handsome now. If so Tan doesn't make her move fast, then I guess I would take him instead, but there is Miyuki and the others too. Oh well it doesn't matter I just have to somehow convince Miyuki, I guess I will ask her when I visit them next time. Sona's thought. That guy Tetsuya must be thinking about something setting me up again. Sigh well whatever I will face it when I visit him next time. Come to think of it, I have not visited him from a long time. I want to play chess with him again, it's very boring staying here all the time. Last time was also a draw, but I was barely able to turn the tables or he would have won. Maybe this time he could defeat me. Wait but if he defeats me then Sona started blushing, and Tsubaki who saw him asked, Sona-sama are you again thinking about Tetsuya? Sona's blush deepened and she said, NN no, why would I think about that idiot? Tsubaki smiled at her antics and said, I would like to meet him the next time you visit. To be able to make the cold Sona like this, he must be something. Sona averted her eyes and said, I don't like him at all do you understand? Tsubaki came in front of her and smirked and said, oh, but I didn't said anything about liking him. Steam seemed to come out of Sona's head and she glared at Tsubaki and shouted, there's nothing like that. After supplying his magic to Ingvold for a whole day there was still no change in her body condition. Tetsuya sighed and was wondering how much more magical power would the sacred gear consume. Kusha who was also in the room, was now wondering whether Tetsuya was telling her the truth about knowing a way to cure Ingvold or not, but decided to believe him as she had a bit confidence in him. Tetsuya was getting bored from sitting all the time and decided to talk with Kusha, to which she complied as she too was feeling bored. She started to tell him about her family friends and master. She even told him about the things from which her master went through. Hearing about Sarayar Tetsaya felt a bit sad for him, but not too much as he knew that life could be very cruel. 
In the past even Miyuki was left homeless by her relatives who broke all the ties with him and her, and they only belonged to a normal human family. So Sererg's case was not too astonishing to him, as he was an aristocrat family among the devils, and not being up to the mark in their eyes, would have certainly led him to such a fate. Despite all this Tetsuya had a good impression of him from all the things that Kusha had told Tetsuya about Sererg. Even by driving him to a corner and not being able to use his family's heritage magic he didn't get disheartened and decided to make a path for himself and show others that he is not worthless. That type of thinking made Tetsuya feel that he was very admirable and now he wanted to meet him soon. Kusha who heard Tetsuya praise her master felt proud and also thought that Tetsuya was not like others who would either feel pity or would feel that her master was worthless. She was even shocked by the type ideology that Tetsuya had. She talked some more to Tetsuya and even started asking questions herself, and when she come to know that he was a leading novelist and mangaka she was very excited. She too was a fan of his work and went into a complete fan mode after that. After hours of questions and answers between Tetsuya and Kusha was over, Tetsuya gave a tired sigh. He had now decided not to tell about his profession about a novelist or a mangaka to anyone. He was glad that she was not a die-hard otaku, or he would have been way too tired. Tetsuya left the room after a while and decided to relax for a bit. He has been transferring his magical power for a whole day, and seeing that it would take a bit more time for her to wake up, he postponed the treatment for later. He then went out in the town for a stroll visiting various places along the way. While walking many girls were looking at him with lust which Tetsuya just ignored, he has been experienced it now, and now knows that the best way in these sort of situations, is to just ignore them. He was also a bit happy as he knew that his looks were good, and he felt proud about it. He unconsciously smiled while thinking that and all the females started to blush even more, some of them even had nosebleeds when they looked at him. Tetsuya then felt killing intent aimed at him from all the directions, and he got out of daze. He then looked around and saw all the males glaring at him. Tetsuya was confused for a bit, but then he looked at some females blushing. He sighed and thought, so that's what the killing intent was huh, it's not my fault that I look good. I know that this is in an I'm world, but still jealousy in this world is on an another level. He then looked at old man couple looking at him, and Tetsuya stiffened on seeing their expression. He looked at the old man, oi 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 jiji, why are you glaring at me like all these worthless younger men and... He then looked at the old woman beside the man who looked like his wife and thought, why the hell is that hag winking at me? He then looked at the old man again who gave him a smug smile on seeing Tetsuya's reaction, and showed Tetsuya his middle finger. Tetsuya's lips twitched, and he mouthed a fuck you, and then walked away. Tetsuya was continued his stroll around the city, but then he suddenly felt some supernatural disturbance. He sighed and thought, seriously, this town has a lot of problems, and why is she involved in this again? She just visited the town a few days ago what is her work this time? Can't she do it in one go? He increased his pace and started to search for an alley. Finally seeing one he instantly entered it and teleported to the location. After teleporting nearby to the location he started walking towards the source. As he started to get nearby he felt a barrier preventing him from entering. He shrugged his shoulders and entered the field. After walking for a while he started noticing some magic attacks being fired. He started walking faster, and once he saw his acquaintance, Kuroka he stopped and looked at fight taking place in front of him. He decided to observe them for a while, and created a sofa for himself, and sat down in a relaxed position with a soft drink in his hand, which he took out from his dimension pocket. He was casually sipping on his drink while enjoying the fight taking place in front of him. While he was looking at the fight he thought, she really lives up to her tilt of a SS class stray devil, but both Himari and Miyuki can also fight on par with her, if they fight together, though it would be a different case if I told them that I would reward them if they are able to beat her. Miyuki might even defeat her alone in such condition. At the same moment in Shiba house. Miyuki. At you. What is this did I catch a cold no. It must be Ani Isama thinking about me Kai. He thinks about me even when he is away from me. He really loves me a lot. Suddenly Himari and Karumi barged into the room and shouted at the same time, Shut up it's the middle of the night and why the hell are you sleeping in Tetsuya's room? Tetsuya continued to observe the fight, then he suddenly noticed something on the field and thought, Ho oh, a sneak attack huh? And disappeared from his sofa. 
The next moment he appeared on the field and punched two guys present near him and said, you should watch your back as well. Kuroka who recognized the voice got surprised and turned around and looked at Tetsuya in astonishment. The others present on the field were also surprised and were wondering who the new entry was. Kuroka looked at him for a while, and then latched onto him and hugged him like a cola, and looked up and asked, Tetsuya Naya when did you arrive here? Did you come here to save me Naya? Tetsuya looked back at her and said, oh, I was here for a while and was watching your fight from there, and pointed his finger in the sofa's direction. Everyone present there turned their heads and looked in that direction, and saw a sofa present there, and all of them had a sweat drop. Kuroka looked back at him with widened eyes and asked, you were watching me fight. Yep, Tetsuya replied. And you didn't even try to help me? Asked Kuroka. Tetsuya gave him a small smile and placed his hands on both of her cheeks. Kuroka got in daze and was about lean forward for a kiss, but suddenly her cheeks were pulled. Tetsuya looked at her with a smile and asked, what the hell are you doing in the town? Wa replied Kuroka with unclear words as her cheeks were being pulled. Tetsuya's smile didn't wavered and he asked, what I am asking is what business did you have in the town when you just visited a few days ago? Kuroka who now understood his question widened her eyes and said, I kahita talu o uebo samehi. I came here to talk to you about something Tetsuya somehow understood her and asked, and what would that be? Kuroka was about to answer him, but Tetsuya stopped her and said, wait we will talk after all this is over. And released her. Kuroka who got released grabbed her red and swelled cheeks, and said with some tears in her eyes and said, Tetsuya Naya you are very mean. How can you do this to me? Tetsuya snorted and said, you are asking me how can I do this to you? You are asking me how can I do this to you? Because of people like those GUYS while pointing at her attackers, a part of my day is always packed with exterminating these things, and today I was already very tired and didn't want to do an extermination today. But you have to be involved in today's situation, why the hell is my life so messed up? Tetsuya stopped his ranting and started to breath heavily. He took out some water from his storage and started drinking. While he was drinking Kuroka looked intently at him and asked, then do you mean that you only came because I was involved and could have gotten hurt? Tetsuya stopped drinking and looked at her weirdy and asked, why the hell are you asking that question? Isn't that obvious I didn't came here to look after those guys, though being worried about you might be too much. Kuroka's lips twitched on hearing his answer, but then she smiled and looked at him and asked, Ni Tetsuya can I ask something from you? Tetsuya looked back at her and asked, what? Kuroka's smile widened and she asked excitedly, will you make kittens with me Naya? As soon as she said that Tetsuya knocked her head with his fist and said, do you really think that it is the right time to ask such a thing? He then looked at the others and said, and why the hell are you guys standing there silently? Do you have brains or not? You should be attacking us or should be planning an attack atlas due to generates. Tetsuya gave a heavy sigh and thought, it really is an anime world. The people present there who were attacking Kuroka earlier, were silently watching the interaction between the SS-class stray devil and the newcomer human. They were then brought back from their stupor by the human insulting them. The leader of those men got angry and said, why you shitty human? How dare you call us devil degenerates? We were waiting silently because he paused for a while thinking about something and said, because we were giving you some consideration as this will be your last time talking yeah, that's why right guys. The others who heard his excuse were looking at him with an expression which said, seriously, but nonetheless his subordinates agreed to his claim. Tetsuya sighed in annoyance and said, you know what I am not in the mood right now, so why don't you go back silently without causing any troubles, and we can just leave it as it is. After saying that Tetsuya thought, following the and I'm cliche these men will now start to insult me, and then Will will then spout some shit about killing me and all, and taking Kuroka along with them. The devils heard him and snorted. Tetsuya just sighed and thought, here it comes. The leader then came forward and said, human you think you are some tough shit or what? Yeah you are just a worthless human. Why would we follow your orders human? Yeah we can kill a human like you anytime we want. You humans are just like some slaves to us devils. Yeah human and after taking your worthless human life, we will take that stray devil with us. We can even have some fun with her before killing her as well. Tetsuya who heard them speaking nonsense looked at them blankly and said, aren't you guys saying human a lot? The devils looked at each other and then looked back at Tetsuya and said, yeah, so what? Tetsuya looked at them with a deadpan expression and said, nothing. 
He then looked at them lazily and said, You guys think that you can kill me easily because I am a worthless human. The devil leader who heard him grinned and said, Yeah we can kill you anytime we want. Tetsaya sighed and said, I am not in the mood of this, but whatever he then looked at them seriously and said, I will show you the technique of a real worthless human. Any guesses on whose technique he will use? Tetsaya then started walking towards them and stopped after a while such that there was some distance between them. The devils who saw him started laughing and said, what are you scared of us, want to go back to your mommy? And then started laughing louder. Tetsaya then took a deep breath and then took a stance. He then looked at his opponents and suddenly shouted, Wolfang Fist. And started attacking them at inhuman speed. The devils who were laughing were suddenly attacked and got serious. They wanted to counterattack him, but he was too fast for them. They could only helplessly see themselves and their comrades getting flown away by the boy whom they had underestimated. After all of them were flown away Tetsaya stopped and said in a disappointed tone, as expected some of them are still alive, even after I put a bit of strength in my attacks. As he said that the devils who were still alive started getting up looked at him with rage and said, we will definitely kill you for killing our comrades you brat and started firing magic at him. Tetsaya who saw the attacks coming towards him, just slapped the projectiles away with the back of his hand. He then looked at his opponents and suddenly got an idea and thought, well let's test that out while I am at it. Tetsaya then took something like a handle and held it and said, let's check this baby out. He then moved his hand to the side and said, Neo Sir Veresta activate, and then a sword with a purple energy blade materialized. Tetsaya admired his sword and thought, though it looks like a normal Sir Veresta, it actually is made by combination of swords. It has of course the Sir Veresta, Asterisk War, Fudgeon, World Trigger, Organon, World Trigger, Y-A-M-A-T-O not the Devil Trigger, though only the space and time manipulation devil may cry, and it can even alter its eyes and form. The others who saw the sword were surprised but not much, but there was feeling of dread coming from the sword. Tetsaya then held his sword and moved his hand said, now let the party begin, and then started running towards his opponents. The devils who saw him running towards them, started to take a defensive stance, but some of them were late and were instantly cut by his sword. Tetsaya stopped and looked at his sword and said, it cuts very easily and smoothly, I like it. Suddenly some of the devils attacked him with a sword, and he blocked them with his sword, and said with an amused tone, ho oh, trying to copy me, I am so flattered. But his tone changed immediately to serious and he said, but that will still not be enough. He pushed them back with his sword, and then suddenly the blade of the sword turned green, and he said, Fuigen. As soon as he said that multiple very long green blades came out from the ground and slashed at his enemies, cutting them with ease. All the remaining devils who saw that were frightened beyond comprehension and wanted to run away, but Tetsaya looked at them with a huge smile on his face and said, you can't escape and held his sword up and the blade of the sword turned white, and he shouted, Organon. Various blades materialized around him in an orbit with him being at the center. Tetsaya then looked back at his opponent and said, Bye, and the blade started revolving very fast cutting all of them quickly and silently. Tetsaya then deactivated his sword, and then looked at the handle and said, This is amazing, but I was still not able to use the last ability. Oh well the time for that will come as well and then stored it back. After killing everyone in the area except Kuroka Tetsaya gave a tired sigh, he was about to turn around, but suddenly he felt two soft sensations on his back. He stayed still and silent for a while and then said, although I do like the feeling of your boobs on my back keep in mind that if Miyuki found about this, you would be up for a whole lot of trouble. Tetsaya could have sworn that when he mentioned about Miyuki, he felt that Kuroka's body shuddered, but came back to normal soon. Kuroka who was hugging Tetsaya from behind, suddenly bit his ear slightly and said, you didn't answer my question you know. On hearing her Tetsaya sighed and said, are you serious about that, we have literally met each other just a few days ago and only once. Don't you think that I could be a bad guy and could kill you a stray devil for a reward from the devils? Kuroka who heard him smiled and then hugged him tightly and said, well I am seriously asking you to make kittens with me Naya as you are strong. Tetsaya who heard her asked in a neutral tone, so your only reason for asking me that because of my power. Kuroka could tell that even though Tetsaya was calm from outside, from the inside he was a bit angry. 
She blew some air in his ear and said, Also I don't feel any hostility from you, and before you say something I can tell a person's emotion towards me using Sinjutsu, and even if you were somehow hiding your emotions, we both know that how easily you could kill me. You even came here to see whether I was safe or not. She then stopped hugging him and came in front of him and bent a little and asked, So I am asking you again will you make kittens with me Naya? Tetsuya remained neutral and hit her head with his fist and said, If you have time to fool around, better start explaining why you came here. Hiroka who was hit by him had some tears formed at the corner of her eyes, and she said, Why are you hitting me Naya, and you still didn't give me an answer. You should not be rude to women especially those who confess to you Naya. She then HMPH apostrophe D and then pouted. Tetsuya who saw her pout couldn't help but blush and thought cute. He sighed and patted her head and said, I will answer your question later, as I don't have that kind of feelings for you yet. Kuroka who was enjoying his hand patting her head, was purring unconsciously and said, Okay I will leave it for later, but I will keep on trying till you accept me Naya. Tetsuya who heard her looked at her and asked, Then what would you do if you found someone stronger than me? Will you ask him the same thing as well? Kuroka who heard him pretended to be angry and said with a pout, How rude, I am not a woman like that. Tetsuya didn't said anything and poked her cheeks. She stared at him and Tetsuya stared back. They remained silent for a while, and then Tetsuya asked, So what would you do? Kuroka looked at him for a while and said, If that happens then I would wait till you become stronger than that guy, and will then ask you again Naya. Tetsuya chuckled and then asked, And what if I would not be able to surpass him? Hearing his question Kuroka thought for a while and then said, Then I would get stronger myself Naya, and would kill that guy, and then you would be the strongest guy left. Tetsuya looked at her with a blank expression for a while, and then both of them burst out laughing. After laughing for a while Tetsuya sat on the ground and supported himself with his hands. Kuroka who saw him sitting sat on his lap and said in low voice, I will keep on pestering you till you agree to make kittens with me Naya, so you should be ready for that in future, or you can simply agree to my request. Tetsuya remained silent for a while and closed his eyes. After a while he opened his eyes and said, My answer still remains the same, but who knows what the future have in store for me. Kuroka who heard him turned around and gave him a passionate kiss which Tetsuya returned to her as well. She then separated and said, Okay, I will wait till that time Naya. Tetsuya touched his lips unconsciously, and he would have to admit it that her lips felt soft. He then looked back at her and asked, If you agreed to that then why did you kiss me just now? Kuroka looked at him with a mischievous expression and said, What, I did agree on waiting on having kittens with you, but that does not mean that I am holding back on anything else Naya. And you know what she licked her lips lustfully and said, I really enjoyed that Naya, so you should be careful as I would definitely attack you every now and then. Tetsuya who heard her sighed and said, you should not get your hopes up though, even the residents of the Shiba house have a hard time doing that, and could only accomplish it when I either let my guard down, which is very rare, or I allow it myself. Kuroka who heard him smirked and said, heh, we will see about that. And again moved forward for a kiss. But just as she was about to touch his lips. Tetsuya stood up phasing through her body using Kamui and said, I told you didn't I, don't get your hopes up. Kuroka looked back at him with an annoyed expression and said, That's not fair Naya, you slipped through my body. I was just out to kiss you. Come on just kiss me on your own Naya. Tetsuya gave a tired sigh, but then gave a rare smile. Hiroka who felt his emotions through her sinjutsu also smiled and thought, We will have a lot of kittens in the future Naya, but I will have to deal with that Miyuki person first Naya. Tetsuya who heard her through his telepathy, smiled wryly and thought, I just hope that Miyuki don't kill everyone though. It would be very troublesome. After Kuroka got out of her thoughts Tetsuya looked at her seriously and asked, Kuroka now I would expect you to tell me the reason for coming here and be serious now. Hearing him Kuroka also got serious and said, I came here on behalf of my leader, he wants to meet you, and Kuroka was about to continue, but Tetsuya interrupted her and said, if this is about joining your group then forget it. You know better than anyone that your group is a terrorist group, and even though you don't have any ill intentions, you would still not be trusted by the major powers of the world, and would most likely face a lot of trouble. The most problematic part among all this is that your family also gets involved in all this somehow, and I don't plan on having them go through all that shit. 
Hearing his answer Kuroka sighed and said, at the very least can you meet them, they were very interested in you, and would like to meet you personally. Tetsuya remained silent and thought for a while, and finally coming at a conclusion turned towards her and asked, okay, when do you want me to meet them? Before Kuroka could answer a voice interrupted her and said, how about now? Both Tetsuya and Kuroka turned their heads and saw five people standing over a magic circle. There were three males one with silver hair, one blonde with glasses, and one with brown hair. There were also two girls present there as well. One of them was blonde and was wearing a magician's cape and hat and the other a lowly with black hair. Tetsuya looked at all of them and gave a tired sigh and thought, why, just why are all this shit taking place today? I just wanted to relax for fuck's sake. While Tetsuya was internally ranting the new party who just came started walking towards them. Seeing them approach her and Tetsuya, Kuroka came forward and asked, why did you all come didn't you all promise that you will not interfere me today? The male with brown hair wearing a Chinese armor, came forward with his staff on his shoulder and said, you were taking too long, so we came to check on you. We thought that you might be in some sort of trouble, but you look just fine. Kuroka looked back at the person and said, shut up Biku. And there was indeed some trouble her more appropriately some devils came to capture me, but I got saved by Tetsuya and Aya. And grabbed his hand and placed it between her breasts. Just as she placed his hand between her boobs Tetsuya came out of his stupor and then looked back at the others, but he looked more intently at the silver-haired man and the black-haired Loli. The Loli or more clearly Afa stared back at Tetsuya and thought, I cannot see through him or judge his strength. Well, if he could help me defeat Baka Red then I don't care. Tetsuya who heard her through telepathy smiled inwardly. He freed his hand from Kuroka and walked towards office and stopped in front of her. Everyone was looking at him with wide eyes, except for Vali who was smirking and thought, interesting. Tetsuya then formed a chocolate bar in his hand, opened the wrapper and moved his hand towards her. Office just looked at the bar and then back at Tetsuya with a blank expression. Seeing her reaction Tetsuya realized something and then broke a block from the bar and then ate it. Office who saw what he was doing smelled the chocolate and after realizing what he was doing opened her mouth. Seeing her opening her mouth Tetsuya took a block and placed it near her mouth and Office took it I N S T A N T L Y imagine Office in place of Kana Kamui eating the chocolate from Kobayashi's hand Tetsuya who saw her eating chocolate cutely petted her head. Though Office was confused by this but she didn't stop him. She even felt good when he rubbed her head, but she had a blank expression on her face. While Tetsuya was busy with petting Office the others were looking at him with shock. They all had the same thought while looking at him, why the hell is he treating a dragon god like some child, and why is Office just accepting all that Bali was the first one to calm down among his team. He then looked at Tetsuya and asked, are you quite done with that? Hearing him his team members too came out of shock and looked at Tetsuya. Tetsuya looked at Vali and asked in a neutral tone, what? Vali was a bit surprised by his neutral expression, but didn't said anything and said, nice to meet you my name is Vali, and this is my team, I heard from my teammate Kuroka that you were very strong and wanted to meet you. Tetsuya looked at him and said, nice to meet you as well I am Tetsuya. He said neutrally making Vali a bit pissed. Just as he was about to speak Biku interrupted him and said, Oi Kuroka is he really the one you were talking about, this guy looks very weak to me. Tetsuya looked at Biku with a deadpan expression and pointed at office, Oi monkey boy stop judging by looks. This lowly here can destroy you along with all your ancestors without even moving an inch. Hearing his answer Kuroka started laughing loudly along with Arthur and Lafay, who were trying very hard to control their laughter. Biku looked at his teammates and then at Office who was eating chocolate with a blank look on her face. He sighed and said, when you put it that way it does make sense. By the way the names Biku hope we get along well. And moved his hand forward. Tetsuya looked at Hima and asked, do you like to lie down doing nothing and just relaxing? Hearing him Biku grinned and said, more than anything. Tetsuya also grinned and shook his hand and said, looks like our tastes match my friend. Vali looked at both of them and said, that's enough Biku. Sorry about that, but still I too don't think that you are very powerful by the way these are my other teammates Arthur and Lafay of the Pendragon family. Hearing their introduction Arthur bowed a bit while Lafay just waved her hand. Tetsuya also bowed in response. He then looked back at Vali and said, Vali right. Vali nodded in response. 
Tetsai also nodded and said, You know what Vali, in a war the most dangerous enemy is not the one who you know is very powerful, but the one who you cannot tell about at all. Ain't I right the great white dragon of supremacy? As soon as he said that blue wings materialized on Vali's back. The wing shined and a voice came from them and said, Ho a human able to feel my presence huh, I am impressed. Indeed you are right human, and by the looks of it, you seem like a person hiding a lot of his strength. Tetsaya just shrugged his shoulders and said, who knows, maybe I am maybe not. Just as he was about to speak any further his shirt was tugged by someone. Tetsaya turned around and saw Office looking at him. He too looked at her and asked, what? Office's expression didn't waver and she said, human defeat Baka read for me. Tetsaya stared at Office for a while and then said, what? Office who heard him stood still and said, kill Baka Red for me. Tetsaya looked at her with a deadpan expression for a while, and then turned to the other and said, what does she mean by that? Though Tetsaya knew about what she was talking about he pretended that he didn't knew about it. Office was about to say what she said earlier, but before she could Tetsaya took a block of chocolate and fed it to her. Office simply ate the chocolate that Tetsaya gave her and didn't said anything. The others who saw that had a sweat drop, and were thinking how easily Tetsaya was able to tame the dragon god. After a while Arthur gave a fake cough and said, What Lady Office means to convey is that she wants you to help her in defeating Great Red, the true dragon or the dragon of dreams. That is also the sole purpose of her informing the group Cow's Brigade. Tetsaya looked at them blankly for a while, and then looked at Office and said, Why do you want to defeat Great Red? Office looked back at him and said, he took my silence away and I want it back. Hearing her answer Tetsaya gave an annoyed sigh, and then looked at the others. As if getting what he was asking Arthur adjusted his glasses and said, you see Office used to live in the dimensional gap, but one day Great Red also arrived in the gap and started living there. Though at first she didn't mind at it, but as the years passed by she started to get annoyed by the, the dragon, and now wants to move her away from her home. Tetsaya nodded in understanding and said, though I understand your reason for your request, but I humbly decline it. He then looked back at Office with an apologetic expression, and patted her head and said, sorry, though Office was enjoying the petting she looked at Tetsaya and tilted her head and asked, why? Tetsaya who saw her tilt her head thought cute, but soon shook his thoughts away. He crouched down to her level and said, you see I am not interested in fighting that much, I just want to enjoy my life, and joining you will not give me that. Office stared at him and asked, even though you can get a lot of power from me. Tetsaya nodded and said, yes, even though you can give me a lot of POWER which I can easily create with skill creation, I will still not join you. After listening to his answer Office looked blankly at him for a while, but was brought out of her stupor when Tetsaya took another block of chocolate and placed it on her mouth and said, though we can still be friends right? Office unconsciously took the chocolate and then asked, friend. Tetsaya nodded his head and said, yes friend, after all it is better to be on each other's good side, or is it that you don't want to meet me again? Office shook her head and asked, would you give me more of THAT while pointing at the chocolate, if we became friends? Hearing him Tetsaya and the OTHERS except Vali, started laughing. After controlling his laughter a bit later. Tetsaya looked at Office and said, of course I would give you lots of chocolates. So friends. And moved his hand forward. Office took his hand and shook it and said, friends. Tetsaya shook her hand for a while and then stood up and said, well I think it's very late, I should be heading home now. Tetsaya turned around to leave, but suddenly he felt someone tugging his shirt from behind. Tetsaya turned around and saw Office tugging it and asked, what happened? Office still in her emotionless tone asked, you leaving? Tetsaya gave a small smile and patted her head and said, sorry I have to go now, but we can meet each other later after all we are friends, and whenever you want to meet me just ask Kuroka, and she will bring you with her. Office nodded and let go of his shirt. Tetsaya again turned around to leave but was again stopped, this time by Vali. Hey wait before you go how about we have a spar, I also want to see whether you are as strong as Kuroka tells you are or not. Tetsaya gave a tired sigh and said, look I am very tired today, and I am not in the mood to fight, so just leave alright. Hearing him Vali snorted and said, you cannot be that tired, those devils you just fought must only be small fries, seeing that even your clothes are completely clean. Tetsaya looked back at him with a neutral look and said, you didn't hear my conversation with office I guess. Didn't you hear I am not interested in fighting? 
I even rejected the chance to fight the Great Red, so what makes you think that I will agree to fighting you? Vali got a bit angry and then gave an evil smile and said. If you only require motivation to fight me how about I kill your fam, just as he was about to say anything further, he was thrown away by an invisible force at an insane speed, and he crashed through ten walls, turning them into rubble in the process. His teammates were very shocked on seeing that even Office was a bit surprised by it. They all looked back at Tetsuya whose hand was aimed in Vali's direction. Tetsuya looked coldly in Vali's direction and asked in a cold voice, I didn't quite hear you want to say it again. Seeing his coldness everyone was shocked, except Office, even Kuroka was very surprised on seeing the cold and angry look on Tetsuya's face. All the members of the Vali team came out of shock and took their stance. Though they all were a bit scared, but they still resolved themselves to fight him. Noticing them taking their stance Tetsuya turned in their direction and said, I don't think that it is necessary, and in my opinion you guys should lower your weapons before my hand slips by mistake. That would not be very pleasurable. For you at least. All of them gulped simultaneously but got serious and were about to attack him, but suddenly they all heard, don't interfere, it's my fight. Vali came out of the rubble completely covered in dust and some visible injuries. Seeing him come out Tetsuya whistled and said, you survived that huh, you are tougher than I thought. Hearing him Vali snorted and his sacred gear appeared on his back, and he started rushing in Tetsuya's direction. He approached him quickly and punched his face. Dust covered the scene from all the wind generated by the wind created by Vali flying towards it in human speed. All the members of the Vali TEAM except Kuroka, grinned, but as the dust cleared all of them widened their eyes, and everyone including Vali was shocked. Tetsuya was just standing at his position holding Vali's fist with his hand without taking any damage at all. He grinned and said, you pack quite a punch don't you? He then started crushing his fist making Vali groan in pain and said, but that's still not enough. Tetsuya's hand then started glowing, and then Vali was suddenly covered in a Kai sphere, and Tetsuya launched him away. After sent flying in the air the orb exploded making his teammates look at Vali in worry. Tetsuya didn't stop there and formed a large Kai orb, and fired it in Vali's direction. Just as the orb was about to hit Vali a cut in the space in front of him appeared and the orb went through it, after a while there was an explosion seen at some distance making Vali and Tetsuya looked in that direction. Vali, you okay? Biku asked his friend making him turn and look at him. Tetsuya also looked at them and saw Arthur holding a sword in his hand which was glowing and was emitting a holy aura. Vali also saw that and became angry and shouted, don't interfere it's my fight, B but, I said don't interfere, seeing that they looked conflicted in approving his order. Tetsuya saw that and said, don't worry I will not kill him, I will just make him understand that he should not anger someone who is out of his league. Hearing him they all sighed in relief. Tetsuya then looked at Arthur and said, by the way nice sword you got there. Arthur lifted up his sword and said, thank you, this here is a fragment of the holy sword Excalibur Excalibur ruler, comes with the power of manipulating space. Tetsuya looked amused and said, heth it's a very handy sword. I guess I should get one as well. Trace on Tetsuya scanned the sword, and then a second later a similar copy of the sword was in his hand. Seeing that all of them were very shocked. Arthur was looking between the sword in his hand and the sword in Tetsuya's. He was very confused and thinking whether the sword in his hand was real or not. Tetsuya gave the sword a few practice swings and then said, Volley ready or not, but here I come. He then started storing magic energy in the sword, and then waved it in Volley's direction. A huge wave of holy energy was sent in his direction. Seeing the wave coming in his direction Volley too didn't stood still and used his sacred gear. Divide 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 was clearly heard by everyone. His wings started glowing and Vali said, looks like I have to get serious if I want to defeat you. Then his and Albion's voices combined and shouted, vanishing dragon. Balance, breaker. And then Vali was covered in a white dragonic armor with huge blue translucent wings. While well, this was all going on Tetsuya was looking at the sword in his hand and thought, not very impressive, looks like I expected too much from just a fragment. He then looked at the armor clad at Vali, and smirked and said while putting the sword away, whoa you armor looks very cool. Vali smirked inside his helmet and said, behold the power of a longinus, a sacred gear with the power of killing even gods, and now you will face your doom with that same power. 
While Vali was doing his Shuuni stuff, Tetsuya silently activated his trace on. When Vali finished his speech Tetsuya looked at him and said, Hearing your talk so high and mighty about your armor I guess it really packs some serious punch. Vali smirked and then said, Of course, you should not expect anything less from a Longinus class sacred gear. Tetsuya smirked as well and then said, Then how about this vanishing dragon? Balance Breaker and Tetsuya too was covered in an armor similar to that of Vali. While Tetsuya was checking out the armor the others were looking at him in shock, except for Afis who only got a bit surprised, but shrugged it off her mind soon. Bali's mouth was open wide inside his armor, and he was shocked beyond comprehension. Soon he came out of his shock and then asked Albion, Albion is his armor a real deal, or it's just similar to yours only in appearance? Albion remained silent for a while and then said, I don't know partner. Vali widened his eyes and asked, what do you mean by you don't know? Hearing his partner's question Albion sighed and said, I mean I cannot feel a presence similar to me in his armor, but at the same time his armor feels like it is the same. I don't know how to clarify it. Vali looked serious for a while and then grinned and said, if you don't know then there is only one way to find out. He said the and started flying towards Tetsuya, but just as he flew for a bit he was punched in the gut, and he heard, not so fast, and was then one again thrown away. Tetsuya who had familiarized himself with the armor, saw Vali coming in his direction, and then immediately teleported towards him and punched him in the gut. He then looked at his hand and then opened and closed his fist and said to himself, this one is pretty good, and it still have the potential to grow further, I guess I could use it a bit in future. Vali maintained his balance after a distance, and then his wings glowed and said, divide. Suddenly Tetsuya's body glowed. Pat felt some drain in his magic power and looked at Vali and said, so you want to play it that way huh? He then formed numerous orbs of magic and fired it in Vali's direction. Seeing the numerous magical orbs coming towards him he smirked and said, thanks for the feast. Divide 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 divide. And the orbs started to get smaller and smaller till the time there was none of them left. He then looked in front but could not locate Tetsuya. Suddenly he heard, you should never lose the sight of your enemies during your battle. He then looked up and saw Tetsuya with a huge blue orb in his hand. Tetsuya quickly approached him and smashed the orb on volley and shouted, massive Rasengan. And Vali was sent down along with the orb which hit him. He tried to use his sacred gear to absorb the power and minimize the damage, but was unable to. He got shocked and asked Albion, Albion, why can't I absorb the power of this attack? Albion was also shocked and said, partner I am not familiar with the energy he used in his attack, that's why I cannot divide this. Tetsuya who heard then smirked and s thought of course you don't know, chakra is not originally an energy used in this world. Even the Yaokai only use Sinjutsu and not Chakra. You must have never come across such an energy ever in your life. Unable to absorb the energy Vali got smashed into the ground along with the Rasengan which made a huge crater in the ground, and then the Rasengan exploded making a dust cloud over the crater. Once the dust cloud started to fade away a heavily injured Vali with most of his armor gone was visible to everyone. Tetsuya deactivated his armor and said, I have to say it I am impressed. You took so many hits from me, and you still have enough strength left to still remain standing. Hats up to you man. Vali looked at Tetsuya and glared at him and said, shut up, it's still not over I will keep on fighting till I collapse. And again activated his armor. Tetsuya sighed and said, as you wish, but be prepared as this one will sting you a lot Mr. Demonic Dragon. Tetsuya then started inhaling a large amount of air in his lungs, and after his lungs were full a white glow appeared in his mouth. Vali was watching all this, but then suddenly Albion said, Vali I have a bad feeling about this, give up while you still can. Vali snorted and said, I, Vali Lucifer never back down from a fight. And a fight like this, there is no chance that I am giving up. Hearing him Albion sighed and then said, then brace yourself partner. Tetsuya didn't pay attention to their talks and then shouted, holy dragon roar. And a huge stream of dragon slaying holy magic was fired at Vali. Seeing the sheer size of the roar Vali knew that he couldn't dodge and fired a beam of his own, but that was destroyed instantly, and Vali was hit by the full force of the roar, and was completely engulfed in it. Once the effect of the roar was over Tetsuya descended from the sky and landed beside a collapsed Vali, and said while looking at him, I guess I did a little too much. 
and gave a tired sigh. While Titsaya was looking at the collapsed Bali the other members of his team approached him. They all looked at Bali and then at Titsaya and suddenly Biku asked, just asking, is he still alive, he doesn't look like he has any life left in him. Titsaya didn't said anything and picked up a pebble and flicked it with a bit of force. The pebble which was flicked by Titsaya hit Bali in the ball and an ah was heard by everyone. They looked at Bali who was holding his balls and was groaning in pain. Titsaya looked at the others and said, yup, he is still alive. The others looked at him and then at Bali and then suddenly Kuroka and Bhikkhu broke out laughing. Seeing them laugh Arthur sighed and said, was it really necessary to take things this far? Titsaya looked at Arthur calmly and said, then what would you have done if someone would threaten you that they will kill your sister? Arthur didn't took much time and said, I would kill them and slice them apart in so many pieces and make them a jigsaw puzzle. Titsaya smiled and said, see you understand me. Titsaya internally snorted and said, if you are able to think that you would go that far for your sister, just be glad that I didn't gave Vali an insta-kill. Arthur again sighed but nodded in understanding. He then looked at Bali and saw him groaning. He then went towards him and crouched down to his level and said, now do you understand why you should not provoke someone suddenly? Vali's body was in pain, but he still managed to turn around and look at Arthur and said with a satisfied smile, it felt really good. Titsaya who heard him turned towards Vali's team and asked, is he a masochist? Hearing him Kuroka and Bhikkhu who had somehow controlled themselves again started laughing loudly, and Arthur too was trying very hard to hold back from laughing while covering La Fay's ears. He then turned towards Titsaya and said, Titsaya san you should not say such things in presence of someone innocent. While still controlling his laugh. Bhikkhu then looked at Bali and said, you really looked fucked up right now. I should take a picture of you. While Bhikkhu took out his phone and was taking Vali's picture, Arthur glared at him and said, Hey didn't I say not to say obscene words in presence of someone innocent, while still covering La Fay's ears. Arthur then turned serious and said, Seriously thought how are you planning to go back in such conditions? Bhikkhu put his phone back and said, Yeah, he would like to know how you the hell did you fucked up so much. Hey no obscene words. Titsaya turned towards Bhikkhu and asked, He. Bhikkhu looked at Titsaya and then said, Oh right you don't know, we are talking about his foster parent Azazel. When he said that both Vali and Arthur glared at him and Bhikkhu shivered and asked, What? Suddenly realization hit him and his eyes widened. He scratched the back of his head in embarrassment and said, Sorry I should have not disclosed that information so easily. Seeing the tense atmosphere Titsaya sighed and said, You don't have to worry about anything. If he does not bother me too much I won't do anything. He then looked at Bali and said with a glare, and that's for you too, or the next time I will fuck you up to a whole another level. Arthur glared at Titsaya and shouted, hey. Bali looked at Titsaya and said in a displeased tone, then next time accept my challenge without taking things so far, it just felt too good. Titsaya again looked at him weirdly and then looked at his teammates and said, are you sure he is not a masochist? I said stop it Titsaya then moved towards Bali and said, I will think about it. For the time being I will heal you so that you are at the very least, able to walk. And started healing him. After healing him a bit Titsaya stood up and then looked at Arthur and Bhikkhu and said, help him get up. Both of them nodded and helped Vali. Vali was then standing while holding and Bijus and Arthur's shoulder. Titsaya then gave him an envelope and said, give this to Azazel it will help in explaining things to him, I presume that you are hiding the fact that you are a part of a terrorist group from him. Vali only nodded and took the letter. He then made a magic circle below his feet, and Arthur and Bhikkhu left him. Vali then looked at Titsaya and thought, he did all that for his family huh, I guess having and protecting a family indeed makes you stronger. Titsaya who heard him through his telepathy smile lightly and said, you have one as well, don't you, and then pointed to his team. Vali was slightly shocked by it, but then smiled and said, next time it will be you who will be in the crater. Titsaya snorted and said, hey you are a hundred years too early to claim that. And smiled. Bali smiled as well and said, till next time. Titsaya waved his hand and say, yeah and Bali disappeared. Titsaya then turned to the others and said, I guess it finally is the time for us to go back. They all nodded, but suddenly Bhikkhu asked, hey what was in that envelope? Hearing him Titsaya gave an evil smile and said, ask him yourself. Though Bhikkhu was very eager to know and seeing Titsaya smile, he was sure that it was something funny, but decided to ask Vali directly later. 
As he was about to leave Kuroka jumped on him, but Tetsuya avoided her and said, uh uh uh, well while moving his index finger to and fro. Seeing that Kuroka pouted and looked away. Tetsuya sighed and approached her, gave her a peck on her cheek and said, later and teleported away. Kuroka was left as a blushing mess as she didn't thought that Tetsuya would take the initiative himself. Seeing her like that Biku smirked and said in a teasing tone, ho the alway flirting Kuroka blushing by a kiss on the cheek. Now that's new. He said that while he rubbed his chin. Hearing him Kuroka got pissed and said, fuck off Biku. Arthur suddenly had tick mark all over his face and shouted, shut up don't you understand. Don't speak obscene words in front of children meanwhile at the Grigori headquarters. Vali just returned back and Azazel saw him he was way too surprised. He looked at the pitiful state of Vali and asked, why the hell are you looking like some shit? Vali didn't said anything and just handed him the envelope that Tetsaya gave him. Azazel was a bit confused by this, but still took the envelope and opened it. When the envelope was open he found a letter and a discount coupon of Tetsaya's restaurant. He first looked at the coupon and then read the letter. After reading the letter he put it down and looked at Vali seriously. Vali also got tensed and thought, what the hell is in that letter? Azazel gave a fake cough and said, so you have grown up huh, it feels like that it was just yesterday when I picked the brat you once were, and now you here we are. Time does flow very quickly. He paused for a while and was remembering the past. Vali was still tensed and was wondering what would he say. Azazel the came out of thinking and said, anyways it seems like I will now be passing my legacy on to you. He then summoned a book through his magic and gave it to Vali. Vali took the book hesitatingly and then read the title, The Art of True Perversion by Azazel. Vali looked at the book with a confused look and was about to ask whether Azazel had given something wrong to him, but the Azazel spoke. That book contains all the methods for all types of perverts. From beginners to pros it's a well-compiled book and its ways are certified by millions of people all around the world, it will surely help you. And as my own son it is not acceptable in the least that you get caught while peeping on the ladies while they are bathing. Azazel remained serious throughout his whole speech. Vali was looking at him with a dumbfounded expression and then said, Hi Azazel then stood up and made a fist and said, From now on I will be giving you lectures on perversion personally. You should feel lucky, not everyone is able to take them for free. He said while rubbing his beard. Vali then came out of shock and asked, WW wait a minute what are you talking about? Azazel smiled at him and said, there is no reason to be shy, you are just a healthy growing boy. It only means that I was correct in your upbringing. Vali was still confused and said, what are you talking about, I don't understand a bit. Azazel looked at him and said, weren't you caught while peeping on women bathing in a hot spring and was beaten to hell by your friend because her family was in there as well. Seriously though I am a bit surprised that he was able to beat you to pulp. But he is a good friend you got, he even gave a discount coupon of the recently famous restaurant in Kuo. He showed the coupon to Vali and then said, I am glad that you have got some great friends. Vali who now understood what happened immediately took the letter and read it. After reading the letter he was fuming with rage and thought, that bastard, I will kick his ass the next time we meet. Albion too was laughing very hard and was saying, you got played by that brat. Ha 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 seriously how the hell could he think of something like this, it is hilarious ha 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 ha. Vali was getting more pissed by his laughing and shouted in his mind, shut up Albion. Azazel the placed his hand on Vali's shoulder and said, make sure to master the art of perversion, it is our legacy after all. Hearing him Vali finally snapped and shouted, Tetsaya I will kill you, after all the things were over Tetsaya teleported back to his house. He opened the door and entered the house. He checked the house with his presence detection and found everyone. All the girls were sleeping in his room. Tetsaya sighed and decided to take a bath. After taking a bath he went to the kitchen he made himself some overnight snack, and after eating it he went and slept on the couch. The next morning he woke up he found Kurumi sleeping with him. He shrugged it off and held her tightly and went back to sleep. Kurumi who was awakened by his action blushed and held him more tightly and snuggled up to him and slept as well. After sleeping a few more hours, Tetsaya suddenly woke up because he felt some killing intent. He got ready and looked at source of the killing intent and found Miyuki glaring at him. Tetsaya sighed and asked, what happened? Miyuki didn't said anything and kept glaring at him. Tetsaya who was a bit confused looked around him and found Kurumi sleeping with him. 
Now understanding what happened he sighed and said, it's not my fault she was the one who came on the couch I was sleeping on. Miyuki was dissatisfied by his answer and said, but you could have just kicked her off the couch. Tetsuya looked weirdly at Miyuki and asked, and why would I do that? Hearing his question Miyuki fell silent, not knowing how to answer. Seeing that she was not answering Tetsuya said, you can't answer me, can you? Tetsuya sighed and said, just think about it, how would you feel if I were to shove you away every time you try to act clingy to me? Miyuki tried imagining what Tetsuya just said and then broke out crying. Seeing her cry Tetsuya looked at her and said, feels bad right, I too would feel the same if any of you were to do that to me. And hugged Miyuki and started consoling her. While he kept consoling Miyuki both Kurumi and Himari had woken up and were sitting near them. Himari wanted to ask what was happening, but seeing Miyuki crying, she stopped and waited for her to calm down. Once Miyuki stopped crying Tetsuya looked at her and said, I know that you do like me, and being possessive for the one you like is understandable, and I don't mind you being possessive just tone it down a little, because it do hurts me seeing you get hurt, but you understand that just like you those two like me as well, just think how do they feel seeing the person they like with other girls. Tetsuya then lowered his head and said, I do know that I am a scumbag and apologize to you all, but I cannot choose any one of you over the other, and if you dislike me for being indecisive, then you just as he was about to continue all the three girls put their hands on his mouth and said, now, why are you being so overdramatic, it doesn't suit you at all. Tetsuya sighed and said, yeah, you are right, those cliché lines were making me want to puke, anyways you understand what I meant to say right? It's up to you guys to decide. Kurumi grinned and said, what are you taking about, you are my Jinchuriki, and also I cannot survive in this world without being connected to you, so we are stuck together for our whole life. Amari then placed her hand on his shoulder and said, I too am not leaving as you did promise me to take responsibility for me, though you meant as a pet, but still you are going to take care of me, and I have already raised my status from your cat to your lover right. She smiled and looked at Tetsuya and said, and besides if I leave you alone who is going to cook food for you when you are tired, I cannot depend on these fool who only know two things in kitchen, boiling the water and freezing ice cubes. Both Miyuki and Karumi glared at Himari who looked back at them with a smug look on her face. Seeing her smug both of them wanted to rebuke, but they knew that what Himari was saying was true. Miyuki then looked at Tetsuya and said, and I cannot leave you as well, because if I leave you alone who is going to protect you from all the horny bitches who are eyeing you on the street? And I will also try to tone my possessiveness down a bit, but only a bit. When she said that both Himari and Karumi looked at her weirdly and said, who are you imposter, where is the cold-hearted Yandir girl we know, you are not Miyuki, where is she? Hearing the Miyuki's lips twitched and she said, if not for Ani-sama hugging me right now you two would have been done for. Seeing their interaction Tetsuya laughed and said, looks like you all are stuck with me huh, well I will try my best, so that you are not going to get rid of me soon. And smiled at them. Seeing his smile they were mesmerized and thought at the same time, I have a feeling that there will be many more joining us later, well, whatever it cannot be helped after all he is the best. Tetsuya who saw them motionless sighed and enclosed them in a bear hug and said, I love you all. Hearing him they all snuggled closer to him and said, we already know. After talking with each other for a bit longer they all decided to have breakfast, and Tetsuya decided to check on Ingvold and Kusha. Tetsuya knocked on the door and waited for a response. After a while Tetsuya heard a come in and entered the room. Tetsuya looked at both his guests and asked Kusha, how are you feeling? Hearing his question Kusha started to check her body, and after confirming everything she looked at Tetsuya and said, it's better than before. She then gave a sigh and said, I still cannot believe how can I heal so fast. Tetsuya who saw her reaction chuckled. Seeing him chuckle Kusha looked at him and asked, what's so funny here? Tetsuya stopped chuckling and said, nothing. Anyways it's good that you are feeling well, and you are healing faster because I enhanced your recovery using my magic. He then looked at Ingvold and asked, is there any change in her since then? Kusha too looked at Ingvold and said with a sad tone, unfortunately, no. There is still no change in her condition. Suddenly Tetsuya placed his hand on her shoulder and said, don't worry, you did what you could, now it's my job to heal her. Hearing him Kusha smiled and said, well then make sure that you don't waste my hard work and heal her soon. Tetsuya looked at her and said, getting ahead of yourself eh? And flicked her forehead. 
Kusha's face twitched in pain, and then she glared at Tetsaya and said, what the hell was that for? Tetsaya didn't said anything and smiled and then again flicked her forehead. Kusha looked at Tetsaya with rage and said, hey I before she could say anything Tetsaya flicked her forehead again. This kept on happening for a while, and finally unable to bear Kusha looked at Tetsaya with tears in her eyes and said, stop stop I apologize for getting ahead of myself. Tetsaya again moved his hands towards her and seeing that Kusha shut her eyes close. But instead of feeling pain she felt comfortable and looked up. Tetsaya who was easing her pain with his magic looked at her and said, sorry about that. Kusha wanted to snap at him but refrained from doing that. She glared at Tetsaya and thought, once I am healed, and these restraints are removed, I will pay you back for all the mean things that you did to me. And started laughing inside her mind. Tetsaya heard her thoughts through telepathy and sighed. He healed her forehead and then removed his hand. Kusha looked at him with a slight disappointment, but didn't say anything. Tetsaya looked at her and said, well I will be going for now, and will return to treat her later. Make sure to rest well and wait for me. And ruffled her hair Kusha snorted and said, stop ruining my hair and just go. She then looked away and smiled. Tetsaya left the room and went to have breakfast with others. He asked Himari to even prepare something for the guests, and then left for work. After working for several hours in his restaurant Tetsaya left and decided to go back home. After entering the house Tetsaya took a bath and got refreshed. He then went towards the room Kusha and Ingvold was in. He knocked on the door and after waiting for a while, entered. He looked at Kusha raised his hand and said, yo, and went towards her. He then took something out of his storage and placed in front of Kusha. Kusha looked at the thing in front of her and saw a paper cup filled with some sort of drink in it. She then looked at Tetsaya with a confused look and asked, what is this? Tetsaya looked at her blankly and said, milkshake. And then went toward Ingvold and started transferring his magic while drinking one himself. Kusha too didn't thought much and decided to sip on hers silently. They kept on talking to each other while Tetsaya was in the room so as to kill some time. After hours of waiting Ingvold's finger twitched a little. Seeing the change in her condition Tetsaya stopped talking and started to pump more energy into her to the point she started glowing. Seeing the change Kusha too looked at both of them intently. Her hopes of treating Sarayarg's mother were increasing as she was seeing Tetsaya cur Ingvold. And after a long wait Ingvold finally opened her eyes. After getting her senses back to normal she started looking around and saw a handsome boy standing near her and a beautiful girl lying on one bed. She looked at both of them and asked in a confused voice, where am I? Kusha was about to answer, but Tetsaya suddenly stopped her and said, you are in a place where mortals like you appear before going for an afterlife. Ingvold and Kusha who heard him had different reactions. Kusha was wondering what Tetsaya was doing, but didn't interrupt him and let him do as he pleased. Ingvold who heard Tetsaya was even more confused and asked, what afterlife, am I dead or what? Tetsaya nodded his head and said, yes my child you are dead indeed, and is about to go to the next plane from here on, depending on your deeds, and by checking your records, I can even let you live in a different world with a wish no less, or you can go to heaven and live your life peacefully there. Ingvold then looked at him intently and asked, are you some kind of god? That's true my child, I am the god who is in charge of soul management and decides where souls of the dead go. He then dramatically opened his arms and his body started glowing. He looked at Ingvold and asked, so ask my child what do you desire, you have one wish so think carefully. Ingvold who heard him remained silent and was digesting the information she got. After she was done she looked back at Tetsaya and asked, can I go back in my own world? Tetsaya shook his head and said, no that's not possible as in your world you are already dead. Hearing him Ingvold got depressed and looked down. Seeing her Tetsaya too got a bit sad and said, I cannot send you to your world in your time, but I can still send you a few years after you died. Ingvold raised her head and looked at Tetsaya with some hope. She asked, how many years further? Tetsaya looked back at her and said, 100 years. Ingvold's face became neutral, and she looked intently at Tetsaya and asked, how can you say 100 years as a few Tetsaya, who heard her looked back at her with a neutral expression as well and said, it's the best offer I can give, take it or leave it. Ingvold then again started thinking, and after a while sighed and said, okay, I want to go back to my own world. 
Did Saya then ask her with an intrigued voice, it shall be done, but may I ask why do you want to go back to your own world, when there is nothing that you will recognize, as the civilization has advanced a lot since then. You even had the option to go to another world and start from the beginning. Ingvul then showed a helpless smile and said, I want to go back to my old world, because I have not yet seen anything there. The only thing that I have seen is my own town, the sea and I only had some friends. That's why I want to go back to my old world and explore it and make more friends. Tutsaya still looked confused and asked, but can't you do the same in the new world? You can explore it and even make new friends there so why do you want to go back? Ingvul then said, I want to explore my world first, and want to experience it whole, even if the idea of a new world is intriguing, I somehow still feel attached to my own world. Tutsaya looked at her and thought, cliché. But then Ingvold made a serious expression and said, plus there is also a possibility that the new world is not safe, what if it is a world that treats women unfairly? There is also a possibility of being sent to dangerous location. I can even be sent there creature. There are lots and lots of unsuitable possibilities in that new world, and I even know nothing about it. Listening to her Tutsaya too got impressed by her intellect and asked, then how can you believe there are no such things in your previous world, after all the society surely would have undergone a change in 100 years? Ingvold heard his question and answered with a smile, I don't know that, I am just taking a gamble here. And there is also a fact that I at least know something about my own world, like language and sorts. I know that I am taking a big gamble, but that's all what I can think of. Tutsaya then rubbed his chin and asked, then what about going to the heaven, you also have that option. Ingvold shook her head and said, that's a big no, because what I said in the beginning is also true, I still want to explore the world and make new friends. Tutsaya looked at her with a neutral expression and asked, are you sure? There are many who would want what you are simply refusing. Ingvold smiled and said, I will think of going there the next time I will die, after all even if I die again, I will come back here right? Tutsaya smiled and said, that's true. Then what is the wish that you want? Ingvold smiled brightly and said, the wish I want is high immunity to diseases of all kinds. Tutsaya then looked at her with a confused expression and asked, why do you want that? You can easily ask for power, money, looks, etc. and all you want is immunity. Why? Ingvold then again smiled helplessly and said, you see I was not able to explore the world and make a lot of friends, because my body was always prone to diseases, and most of the time I was on my bed, so this time I want to avoid all that. Tutsaya gave an understanding nod and then raised his hand and pointed it in Ingvold. Ingvold looked at his hand and then suddenly her body started glowing. She looked started checking her body and thought, this feels so good and even the pain in my body is easing, ah, what a bliss. Her body then stopped glowing and she looked at Tutsaya. Tutsaya looked back at her as well and said, I have fulfilled your wish, and you are now back in your world. Now step out of the room and walk straight in the hallway. Once you reach a room with a big table at the center, you will find three girls there ask them to help you check your body's physical condition. Tell them that Tutsaya said so. He then motioned at the door and said, now go Ingvold only nodded and then stepped out of the room. Once the door was closed and Tutsaya made sure that Ingvold was gone Tutsaya sighed and said, talking like that felt way too weird. I am not doing that again. Kusha who was silent during the whole ordeals, finally opened her mouth and asked, what the hell was that? Tutsaya looked at her and said with a neutral tone, consequences of making me sit here without doing anything. Kusha looked at him with a deadpan expression and asked, was that fine for us to do that? Tutsaya waved his hand and said, relax it's not a big deal, besides she did wake up after 100 years. I was more worried about what to do if she asked to transport her to another world. Kusha thought for a bit and then shrugged her shoulders and said, whatever it was not me who said anything. You would be the only one who will bear the consequences anyway. Hearing her Tutsaya's lips twitched a bit. She then looked at him and asked, and what was that glow on her? Tutsaya then again looked at her and said, oh that, I just eased the soreness in her body joints, and healed the aftereffects of the treatment that's all. Just as he finished saying that the door of the room was suddenly opened, and then the purple blur was seen. The next moment Ingvold was holding Tutsaya's collar and was shaking him while saying, you lied to me, after Ingvold calmed down a bit and stopped shaking Tutsaya, she started to get embarrassed and covered her face with her hands. 
that Sai adjusted his clothes, then looked towards Ingvold and then said, sorry with a slight bow, and then stood there in silence. Feeling awkward by the silence Ingvold looked at Tetsaya from between her fingers, and when she saw him not in the slightest bit flustered and his neutral expression she became even more nervous. Seeing that how nervous she was feeling Tetsaya sighed and said, sit down first let us explain what happened for you to be present here or more clearly, what we actually know about. Ingvold sheepishly nodded her head and sat down on the bed she was lying on, and Tetsaya sat beside Kusha. Tetsaya then looked at Ingvold and said, My name is Tetsaya Human, and this lazy person who remain lying all the time is Kusha a devil. We are your actual parents. Both the girls became motionless after hearing what he said, Ingvold started muttering, My actual mom and dad. My parents look as old as me does that mean that I will never grow up just like them. Soon Kusha came out of shock and shouted, Who are you calling lazy you bastard, I am still recovering and besides how the hell she became my daughter. Suddenly the door of the room was opened with a loud this, and the room suddenly became cold. Tetsaya looked in the direction and saw Miyuki whose eyes were covered with hair. There were also Himari and Karumi behind her sighing. Miyuki the looked up and said in a cold voice, Which of you bitch has a daughter with Ani-sama? Tell. Me. Now. Seeing her both Kusha and Ingvold got scared, and Ingvold immediately pointed at Kusha. Kusha too wanted to point at Ingvold, but could not as her hands were broken. Kusha gulped her saliva and then looked at Miyuki with fear and said, WW wait Miyuki this is a misunderstanding I have no relationship with Tetsaya. He is just pulling a prank. But all her pleas were in vain, and Miyuki started walking towards her and said, You harlot, you dare taint Ani-sama with your worthlessness. My Ani-sama. You need to die. Miyuki then formed an eye spike and continued walking. She again looked at the scared Kusha and said, Don't worry though I will give you a painless death, and I promise to not kill your child, because she also belonged to Ani-sama. Miyuki was about to stab Kusha, but Tetsaya stopped her hand, and then gave her a light head chop. Miyuki then looked at Tetsaya with her normal expression and asked, What happened Ani-sama, why do you hit me? Seeing her sudden change both Kusha and Ingvold were speechless. Both Himari and Karumi were trying their very best not to laugh on seeing their reactions. Tetsaya then held Miyuki's face and moved it, so that she faced Ingvold and asked, What age do you think she is? Miyuki looked at Ingvold intently, and then turned towards Tetsaya with a smile and said, She is probably around my age. Tetsaya nodded and smiled and said, Then how the hell do you think that I can make a child when I was just a year old? Hearing his question Miyuki blanked for a while and then asked, Then about the child. Tetsaya sighed and said, it was just a prank. Geez you jumped to conclusions too quickly, you should analyze the situation first before taking any actions understand. And started petting her head. Receiving the head pat Miyuki was in bliss. After petting her for a while Tetsaya stopped making her feel a bit disappointed, but she became normal and turned towards Kusha and said, I am sorry for threatening you just now, I hope that you don't take it too seriously. Hearing her apology Kusha rapidly started shaking her head and said, No, you don't have to apologize, it was just a misunderstanding. The one who is actually at fault here is Tetsaya. If he didn't try to make such a prank there would be no such problem. Tetsaya looked at her and said, Are you really sure that you should speak badly of me? If not for me not even Himari and Karumi could have saved you. Maybe next time I should not stop her. Just as he finished speaking he saw Kusha bowing her head as much as she could. Kusha who suddenly thought about what would have happened if Tetsaya would have not stopped Miyuki again, became frightened and bowed her head and said, I am very grateful for received your kindness Tetsaya-sama, I will always remember it, and will help you whenever you would be in need of me. Tetsaya nodded his head in satisfaction and said, Good, there is no problem as long as you understand. You may raise your head now. Kusha then raised her head and gave a sigh of relief, suddenly she felt a hand on her shoulder, and she turned her head and saw Himari. Himari looked at her and said, you will be used to all this in time. Kusha wasn't sure what to say and simply nodded her head. After everyone was calmed down Tetsaya turned towards Ingvold and said, sorry for all that. Ingvold didn't said anything and continued to stare at him. She then sighed and said, I am Ingvold Leviathan a human devil hybrid, I hope that you will not pull any more pranks. Tetsaya nodded his head and said, of course, I hope that we get along from now on. Ingvold nodded her head and said, I hope so as well. Now are you going to tell me why am I here? 
Tetsuya nodded her head and then looked at Kusha and said, your turn now. Kusha nodded her head and then started explaining Ingvold about the situation. After Kusha stopped talking Ingvold started thinking. Tetsuya who saw this looked at her and said, take your time, we are not in a hurry. Ingvold nodded her head and continued. After a while she looked back at others and said, looks like I really slept for 100 years. She then turned towards Tetsuya and bowed her head a bit and said, thank you for curing me, I am very grateful to you. If there is anything that you want my help with then don't hesitate to ask. Tetsuya waved his hand and said, no problem there and even if I would not have helped, you would have woken up in a few years or so. I just lessened the time in which you would have woken up. Ingvold then looked at him and said, even so I am very grateful for that. And smiled. Tetsuya only nodded his head and then stood silent. Kusha then looked at Tetsuya and asked, Tetsuya you just said that you only decreased the time she needed to recover. What do you mean by that? Hearing her question Tetsuya turned serious and said, What I mean is that I was not the one who was curing her, she was already being cured by her sacred gear who was absorbing her energy to take its form, I only supplied it with more energy to fasten its pace. Tetsuya then turned towards Ingvold and asked, Now what will you do? Where will you stay from now on? Ingvold thought for a while and then said, I don't know, but I will work something out. You don't have to be worried about me. Tetsuya looked at her sternly and said, who said I was worrying about you? Looks like you don't understand my question. He then sighed and looked back at her and said, let me reframe it. What I mean to ask is, how are you going to survive in the world right now? Hearing his question all of them became confused and seeing all of them Tetsuya gave an annoyed sigh and said, you guys seriously don't understand a thing. I am saying that you are not just any devil, you are a descendant of the former devil king Leviathan. Once the factions come to know of your existence your life will become a literal hell. The new devils will probably try to either kill you or would torture to interrogate you, and the old devil faction will surely try to recruit you and use you in the power struggle. Not to mention the angels and fallen angels will also come after your head. And don't tell me that you can lay low in this world forever. So I ask you again what will you do now? Hearing all the things that could happen to her Ingvild became uncertain of her earlier decision and started thinking what to do. Kusha wanted to ask her to join Sererg's peerage, but the fact that Tetsuya told about what the devils would do to her once they come to know of her existence made her stop. She then began thinking about a solution for her problem, but couldn't think of anything. Same thing was going on with the other girls present in the room. Tetsuya finally stepped forward and said, if you don't have anywhere to go then why don't you join my team? All of them then looked at Tetsuya speechlessly. Noticing all the gazes at him Tetsuya looked back at them and asked, what? Kusha was the first to speak and she said, I didn't knew that you were a good person. Tetsuya's brows twitched a bit and he said, aren't you freeloading on this good person's home? Hearing him Kusha became red from embarrassment and looked away. Ingvold then looked at Tetsuya and asked, why do you want me to be in your team? Tetsuya then looked back at Ingvold and shrugged his shoulders and said, I am not being good to you, you can call it something like an investment. Having a descendant of a devil king with a sacred gear no less. Is there anything that I can argue to not ask you to join my team? Tetsuya then raised his hand and said, in return you will get and started counting on his fingers, 1A shelter 2, nutrition 3, training for fighting and self-defense 4, and of course the protection from all other factions. I don't want to brag, but I can assure you that the only people who know that we belong to the supernatural world are only the people whom we told about it ourselves. So what is your answer, and also you will also help in house chores, and sometimes work in the restaurant if there is too much rush. Ingvold then began thinking and after thinking for a while she looked at Tetsuya and said, I would like to join, but I don't want to trouble you and put you all in danger. Hearing her Tetsuya sighed and said, look if you are not joining only because you don't want to put us in danger, then that's no worry for us. All of us are pretty strong, and I can annihilate any enemy we face. Ingvold then asked, if you can annihilate anyone then why are you making a team? Tetsuya looked at her and said, well I am forming a team because even though I can annihilate anyone, there are still times when I may not be able to reach on time, and at those time having a group would be better for my team, as most of the time Kurumi would be with me making these two left alone to face the enemy. So I am forming a group only to reassure myself that nothing happens to the others in my team. 
Ingvall then squinted her eyes a bit and asked, Then do you mean that if I was not capable enough, you would not have asked me to join your team? Titsaya nodded her head and said, Yes, I would not have asked you to join my team then. Protecting such a comrade is no problem for me, but not being able to protect such a comrade when I am not nearby will make me more depressed. And it would not be only me, others in the team would also feel sad if such a thing were to happen. Tetsuya then looked away and said, I don't want that, I don't want to see a comrade die when I am still alive. He didn't turn back and said, I will ask you one last time, will you join my team? Ingvold looked at him for a while, and then hugged him and said, Okay I will join, I don't want to see my savior sad, and besides, you did promise me that you will protect me as well right? And smiled. Tetsuya also smiled and said, Of course, welcome to the team Ingvold I hope that we get along well. After joining the team Ingvold has also started living in the Shiba residence. Most of her time is usually spent on learning about the changes that the society has undergone in the past century. Tetsuya has also started training her which sometimes made her question herself whether her decision of joining his team was correct or not, but she stopped complaining once she Tetsuya's cooking and now trains diligently. Tetsuya also checks the condition of her body from time to time, so as to confirm if her body is properly healed or not. She has also learned the most important rule of the Shiba household, no one touch the coffee jelly. Ingvold has also come to admire Tetsuya because of him being an all-rounder. Seeing his battle against both Himari and Miyuki made her speechless. Like this a week passed and now Kusha has been fully healed. Tetsuya went to her room and entered without knocking. As he entered the room he saw a naked Kusha changing her clothes. They made eye contact with each other and stared for a while. Tetsuya then turned around and said, sorry, force of habit, and left the room. Kusha was left blushing inside the room, and she quickly changed her clothes and then quickly went out of the room. As soon as she opened the door and stepped forward she crashed into Tetsuya making her fall backwards, but before she fell Tetsuya caught her and then made her stand still. She glared at him and said, don't you have the decency of knocking before entering the room. Tetsuya rubbed the back of his head and said sheepishly, sorry about that, but hey look on the bright side it showed me how much your health has improved over the past week. Before you came here you were not even able to move your hands and legs, and now you are able to change your clothes and is also able to run after me. So when you take all that into consideration what all happened was only a small price to pay. Hearing him Kusha got a bit angry and said, you just saw a woman's naked body do you think that is a petty thing? Tetsuya looked at her and said, I didn't said that it was a petty thing, in fact I felt that the view was great. I can already say that you would turn out to be a beautiful woman once you grow up. When she heard what Tetsuya said she blushed and said, that's not the problem here. Tetsuya then sighed and said, then if it makes you feel any better, then you can see me naked as well and started to take out his shirt, but before he could take it off Kusha caught his hands and said while blushing, stop 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 there is no need for that, I forgive you. And sighed. She then took a glance at his body and blushed more. Tetsuya then adjusted his clothes and then looked at Kusha who was looking down in shame. Sighing Tetsuya put a hand on her head and started petting her and said, I am sorry. She didn't said anything and only nodded her head. Tetsuya petted her head for a while, and once he thought that Kusha was back to normal he stopped. He then looked at her seriously and said, I have checked Ingvold's body during the course of week, and there have been no problems yet seen with her condition. But I cannot say the same for the other patient, because the reason for her improvement is mostly because of her sacred gear. Kusha also turned serious and then said, I understand, I will not blame you for anything, even if you improve her condition a bit we would be really grateful to you. Tetsuya nodded in response. She then looked confused and asked, by the way what sacred gear does Ingvold pauses? Tetsuya looked at her with a deadpan expression and said, do you really think that I will tell you the information about my teammates? When she heard that she pouted and looked away. Tetsuya poked her cheeks and said, let's go and have breakfast. Even though Kusha was a bit angry she still nodded her head and thought, he makes me flustered so easily, what the hell is with this guy? Ugh I will surely pay him back in future. Tetsuya smiled and thought, good luck with that, and then went to have breakfast with others. Once the breakfast was done Tetsuya looked at the others and said, Miyuki, Himari, Ingvold and Kurumi, I will be going to the underworld today along with Akusha to treat the other patient, so I allow you all to take a day off from training as well. 
He then passed an envelope to then and said, there is some money here, you can use it as you all like. Miyuki then looked at Tetsuya and asked, Ani-sama can I tag along as well? To which Tetsuya shook his head in denial and said, no you can't, we are still not sure what are their intentions yet, and even if I trust Kusha, a bit, but we still don't know what would they plan against us. So I cannot put all of your lives in danger. Ingvil then looked worried and asked, would you be okay, your life would not be in danger right? Tetsuya then smiled at her making her mesmerized and said, there is nothing to worry about I will not be harmed, and even if the situation takes turn for worse, I can simply teleport BACK or, I can even destroy that faction. Tetsuya then looked at them with seriousness and said, listen carefully, if there is anything wrong here contact me immediately, you all are my first priority after all. He then looked at Kurumi and said, I am leaving you here so you are the in charge, make sure to protect them. Kurumi nodded and said, you don't have to be worried they all are self-capable, and if the situation arises I will fight as well. Tetsuya nodded and then looked at Kusha and said, then let's go to the underworld now. Kusha then looked at him and said, there is just a slight problem, you cannot travel with my magic circle, because you are not a part of my master's peerage. Tetsuya looked back at her and then said, you don't have to be worried about that I can travel on my own, you just need to lock your location, and I will teleport there as well. Kusha nodded and made her magic circle, and after confirming the location Tetsuya made his as well. He looked at his team for one last time and then said, I will be going now, make sure to enjoy your day off, and don't even think about touching my coffee jelly. His team nodded and said, make sure to come back soon. Tetsuya nodded and smiled at them making all of them blush. He then looked at Kusha and nodded his head. Kusha who saw him nodded her head in response as well. Tetsuya then looked at his circle and said, Underworld here I come. And then both of them disappeared. Tetsuya and Kusha appeared in some sort of garden with their respective magic circles underneath them. Tetsuya then started checking his surroundings and saw a purple sky, a garden where they appeared and a small mansion near it. Kusha then looked at Tetsuya and said, Welcome to the underworld, we are currently in my master's territory, or you can also call it our home. Me and all of my master's peerage members live here. Tetsuya nodded his head and said, Though I don't think that I have to remind you, but make sure if anyone from your side takes action against me, I will not stay still as well. Kusha also nodded her head and then sheepishly asked, Can you at least not go too hard on them, if they attack because of some misunderstanding? Tetsuya then sighed and nodded. He then thought, I have a feeling that they will definitely attack me now. Kusha then started walking and then said, follow me. Tetsuya didn't say anything and silently followed her. Once they reached the front of the mansion Kusha turned towards Tetsuya and said, wait here. Kusha then walked towards the door and then pushed the doorbell. After a while a voice was heard, who is there? Kusha didn't took much time and said, it's me. As soon as she said that various noises were heard by the both of them. Tetsuya looked at Kusha who looked back at him with a wry smile. Then suddenly the door opened and various people came out of the mansion. A blonde girl then stepped forward and grabbed Kusha's shoulders, and then started shaking her and asked, where were you all this time, do you know how worried I was? Then an orange-haired young man stepped forward and said, stop that Koreana how will she answer if you keep on shaking her like that? He then turned towards Kusha and said, I am glad that you came back safely. While this was going on Tetsuya was silently looking at them with a smile and thought, she has a good family. Then suddenly two men, one with green hair and one with blonde hair, noticed Tetsuya and asked, who are you and what are you doing here? This brought everyone's attention at him, and they all started looking at him curiously. Tetsuya simply looked at Kusha and said, explain the situation to your friends. Kusha was about to speak, but then a giant man who was practically made of rocks walked towards Tetsuya and said, didn't you hear, we asked you what are you doing here? Answer now. Kusha then grasped everyone's attention and said, stop it you guys, he was the one who helped me earlier if not for him I would not be able to return home. But then a silver armor cladded person said, so you mean to say that a human helped you overcome a situation which you, a devil could not. I don't believe it. That human must have used some sort of magic on her. Hearing him all the other males except for the orange-haired one gathered around Tetsuya. The girl named Koriana sighed and said, Guys I don't believe that she is under some sort of spell, why don't you ask her first, it could also be a misunderstanding. 
But the same armor guy spoke again, we will surely interrogate him, but after we restrain him first, we don't know what his intentions are yet. Then the green-haired guy pointed his staff at him and said, answer human, did you use any sort of magic on her? But the stone guy stopped him and said, leave that for later. He then looked at Titsaya and said, surrender now, and we will make sure that you are not harmed much. When Titsaya heard him he gave a tired sigh, and seeing him sigh Kusha face palmed and said, so much for my promise of not making trouble for him. Those guys are now in serious trouble. Hearing her Koryana looked at her with widened eyes and asked, is that handsome guy really that strong? Kusha continued to look at Titsaya and said, see for yourself, it will be over soon. This made both Koryana and the orange-haired guy curious, and they too looked at Titsaya. Titsaya then took his hand out of his pocket and then stretched them and said, you know what you just fucked up. Titsaya then used his telekinesis, and all of them started floating in air making them surprised. Titsaya didn't let them say anything, and then started revolving them around him at a very high speed, and then finally made them crash against each other, and let them fall unconsciously on the ground. Seeing what Titsaya just did the remaining three were looking at him with amazement, even Kusha was shocked seeing what Titsaya just did. Titsaya then looked at the orange-haired guy and asked, you are not going to join Mr. Lion. This made him shocked, but he overcame it quickly and said, I have no such intentions, on the other hand, I would like to apologize to you on their behalf, they are still a bit immature. Titsaya shook his head and said, as long as they understand. Gusha then came out of shock and looked at Titsaya for a while. Feeling her gaze Titsaya looked at her and asked, what? Kusha then pointed at the pile of B.O.D.I.E.S. her teammates and said, didn't you say that you would go easy? Titsaya looked at her with a weird look and said, didn't I held back enough, what do you want me to do, kick on their balls? Hearing his answer Kusha sighed and said, whatever, it was their fault to begin with, but please hold back a bit more the next time they fight you. Titsaya gave an annoyed sigh and thought, I will crush their balls the next time they decide to attack me without any reason. After helping the unconscious comrades Kusha, Koriana and the orange-haired guy made way towards Titsaya. The orange-haired guy bowed a little and said, I am Regulus the pawn of my master Sarayard Bale, and once again I apologize to you on their behalf. I hope you do not hold a grudge against us. Titsaya waved his hand and said, you don't have to apologize again, my name is Titsaya Shiba, I hope we get along in the future. The guy also nodded his head and said, I hope so as well. And they both shook their hands. Then the blonde girl besides Kusha came forward and said, nice to meet you, I am Koriana Andriel Fasariarg Sama's bishop. I hope we get along well. Are you Kusha's boyfriend? Hearing this Kusha blushed and glared at Koriana and said, WW what are you saying, we are not like that. But Titsaya stepped forward and looked in her eyes making her look back in his eyes as well. Kusha was mesmerized by him, but then came out of it when Titsaya said, why are you being shy to tell her about our relationship, she is your friend right? Koriana's eyes then shined and she looked at Kusha and said, really Kusha got herself a boyfriend, now that's interesting. Gusha snapped and said, there is no such thing like that, he is not my boyfriend. Titsaya then placed a hand on her shoulder and said, don't be shy, you know Koriana during the whole time she was at my place, I fed her all her meals with my own hands. We even slept in the same room. Hearing him Kusha's forehead was twitching and she shouted, that was because I was unable to eat myself because of my broken hands. And you stayed in the same room because you had to heal Engveld. Titsaya just smiled and said, your flustered expression is really cute. And Kusha immediately blushed. Titsaya then turned to the other two and said, now jokes aside I would like to do my work soon, so if it is not a trouble can I meet your king. Both Regulus and Koriana came also became a bit serious and asked, what business do you have with Sarayarg Sama? Hearing the question Kusha also came out of her stupor and said, I will explain it all, once we see master, it would also be better to explain all of them together. Well pointing at the CORPSES her friends. Koriana and Regulus nodded and said, okay then, follow us. Titsaya nodded and started following them while lifting the corpses with his telekinesis. Walking in the large hallway some they encountered some maids and butlers on the way who respectfully bowed on seeing the peerage members, while also looking weirdly at Titsaya and the floating corpses. After walking for a while Titsaya and the others reached a room with a large door. Regulus then stepped forward and knocked on the door. 
Soon a voice saying, who was heard and Regulus calmly said, Master it's me Regulus. Then a come in was heard. Regulus asked the others to wait and then went inside. After waiting for a while, Regulus came out and said, you all may come in. With a nervous face. Seeing the nervousness on his face, Tetsaya used his telepathy to hear his thoughts, and then gave a mental sigh. All of them entered the room, and no sooner did Tetsaya enter the room he was welcomed by a fist. Tetsaya simply caught the fist and punched the person who attacked him, making him crash to the wall, and successfully knocking him out cold. Tetsaya then looked at Regulus who was looking at him with an apologetic expression and said, Sorry for such inconvenience, but as soon as Master knew that you beat all five of them without any effort, he became excited and wanted to fight you. I truly apologize for his behavior. And gave a deep bow to Tetsaya followed by Kusha and Koryana, who were bowing as well. Tetsaya just sighed and asked, where should I keep them? All three of them looked up and had a grateful look on their faces. After a while Sererg woke up and then clutched his stomach in pain. He then looked around and saw five members of his peerage knocked out cold. He then started thinking about what happened, and then suddenly stood up and saw Tetsaya and the others sitting on a sofa while having some tea. Tetsaya noticed him and then said, you sure show some nice hospitality to others. Hearing him the other three also looked at Sererg and stood up and slightly bowed to him. Sererg raised his hand and stopped them and said, what can I do, I became so much excited when I heard that you beat most of my peerage with such ease. By the way I am Sererg Bale, the king of this peerage. Tetsaya nodded and said, Tetsaya Shiba, nice to meet you. Sererg then clenched his fist and said, Tetsaya ha, you are strong, I will fight you again sometime. Tetsaya stared at him with a deadpan expression and then sighed and said, sure sure whatever. Now are you all still going to pretend it to be unconscious? All of them then looked at the corpses who fidgeted a bit when Tetsaya mentioned them, and slowly stood up with an embarrassed expression. Tetsaya then nodded and said, good, now that all of you are conscious kindly take your seats, and Kusha start explaining. All of them nodded their heads and followed his instructions. After Kusha was done explaining all of them were silent while Tetsaya was simply sipping on his tea. Sererg was clutching his fist in anger, and then smashed it on the table and said, those damn geezers. And cursed the higher-ups for trying to sell Ingvold, because of which Kusha got in danger. The others were also angry but were controlling themselves. He then looked at Tetsaya and said, Tetsaya I am very grateful to you for saving my queen, if not for you, we would not be able to see her again thank you. Tetsaya waved his hands and said, it's alright more importantly let's talk about the main business that I came here for, Kusha if you may. Kusha nodded her head and said, Sarah Ergsama you do know that the lady who was kidnapped along with me, was also suffering from the same disease as Miss Lasama right? Sarah Erg nodded his head and said, yeah that's why I sent you to check on her condition, because she was suffering from a similar disease like mother's. Kusha nodded and said, after we were rescued by Tetsaya, he said that he was able to heal her and did so a few days ago. She seemed to be back to her normal healthy condition, and I have witnessed this all from my own eyes. Tetsaya also nodded and said, yeah, she slept in the same room as me daily and saw me do it firsthand. Kusha heard him and blushed and said, there is no need to phrase it like that, so that the others misunderstand us. The others looked at them with a sweat drop, but then Sarayar got their attention and said, so you mean to say that Tetsaya is capable of curing my mother? Tetsaya then put his cup down and said, yes and no, I was indeed able to cure Engvold, but that was only because her sacred gear was also helping, so while I can do try to heal your mother, I cannot guarantee that it would be successful. Sarayar thought for a while and then nodded his head in understanding. He then looked at Tetsaya and then bowed his head and said, thank you very much for your cooperation. Even if it is a little my mother still has some hope right? Tetsaya nodded and said, don't worry I would try my best to save her, I know how important one's family is. Sarayarg nodded and smiled he then stood up and moved his hand forward and said, once again thanks a lot and let's get along from now on. Tetsaya stood up as well and shook his hand and said, I hope so as well. Sererg then looked at the others and said, okay all of you rest for now, and tomorrow we will visit mother in the Citri territory. When Titsaya heard that, he thought, let's hope that we don't come across Arar Sona tomorrow, otherwise it would be way too much of a hassle to explain them, and gave a tired sigh. Kusha noticed it and asked, what's wrong? Titsaya looked at her and said, nothing, just praying for my well-being. 
Kusha became more confused but didn't think much about it, and then started showing Tetsuya around the mansion. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.